Okay, guys, uh, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will most certainly not be your Dungeon Master uh, this evening, this afternoon, this morning, wherever this finds you, whenever this finds you. Today, I am, uh, we're streaming actually uh, parallel both on the uh, Dungeon Musings YouTube channel and on Mr. Hobbs's Gamerhood, uh, where the fine folks listening there have had to listen through two intros from us so <laughs> thank you so much for everyone listening on the gamerhood uh today we are playing a very uh special charity one shot of uh steve uh Gradzicki's very very cool low fantasy gaming um we've uh, played this a little bit on uh, our channel before but hobbs has a uh, ongoing campaign running this game uh the charity session today is made possible by a very very generous donation from one of our regular uh listeners and viewers uh and that would be brian uh brian very generously donated to the heroes save villages campaign that we run on the channel that benefits sos children's villages international and uh because of that he uh put together the uh this very stellar cast of players and dms uh, and in addition, uh, Hobbs, our very uh, kindly DM for the evening today, uh, has uh, uh, had offered to try and help us with uh, the last bit of fundraising for our annual charity raffle. Uh, now, for those listening at home, uh, you, you may or may not be uh, familiar with the Heroes Save Villages campaign, but it benefits SOS Children's Villages International, a terrific organization active in over 300 uh, countries. That benefits over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children from around the world. Uh, they provide stable and secure uh, living environments uh, for, or unsupportive living environments for kids who otherwise would not have a home and would not have an opportunity to, uh, to have a childhood. And uh, from now until September 1st, 2020, uh, you, for every $25 Canadian donated, you get one chance to win uh, the grand prize of our raffle or one of the other very cool prizes that we have on offer. Uh, the... Grand prize is a copy of Beetle and Grimm's Gold Edition Eberron Rising from the Last War box set that they very generously donated to the charity. Uh, we also have a bunch of other awesome prizes, including two copies of um, uh, the Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea Core Rulebook from uh, Jeff Tellanian. We got two of those. Uh, we have a copy of the Any Award winning um, uh, Keith Anon's The Monsters Know What They're Doing. We have uh, copies of the, let's see here. Uh, a bunch of cool stuff from the Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop. We have uh, some very cool zines from our very own uh, Jason Hobbs. Uh, we have a chainmail dice bag that was made by a, our resident armor smith on our channel. Um, we have uh, a couple, oh, a sch Skittermander dice bag. Um, and I understand we actually have a new prize too <laughs> that's been added to the lot. Steve, what, what was that? Oh, yeah, I feel like a Scrooge now. I'm just. <laughs> a giveaway of a, of a hardcover of of their choice. Well, very, one very one. cool. One of the hardcovers from uh, from uh, Low Fantasy Games. Thank you so much for that, Steve. That is very, very generous. Uh, so if um, if the game looks cool, which, I mean, I'll tell you right now, uh, without spoilers, it's a pretty fucking awesome game. Uh, you also have a chance of winning a hardcover of your choice of one of the uh, Low Fantasy Gaming uh, uh, books as well, too. So... Um, and the best thing is, is that all donations go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel, none of it goes to the Twitch, none of it goes to any other middleman. It all just goes to help out the kids who benefit from the SOS Children's Villages International charity. And uh, it also gives you a chance to win some amazing gaming stuff. Um, but today's uh, session, as I said, is made possible by a very, very generous donation from Brian. And Brian wanted to say a couple words before we throw it over to Hobbs to try and kill off our characters. So Brian, what did you want to say? Yeah, I got a couple of things I'd like to say. I actually got a few notes, which is nothing compared to a normal muster in the Midlands. First, I want to say thanks to new guy Dave for taking my spot two weeks ago when I couldn't make it. Um, so thanks, Dave, uh, for stepping up and taking that uh, 15th schedule because I wasn't going to be able to be here. Um, and also, it also allowed us to put this together. So this was uh, really sweet. I, I can't take really a whole lot of credit for this. GM Hobbs was talking about um, wanting to do something and stream a long Midlands game. And 
you know, basically I said, well, just, just do it. And he took off with it and the rest is history. And here we are with like, they said, this is an all-star lineup and I'm here too. So how did I get here? When I was younger uh, and uh, at, actually living at my dad's, all the older boys from the neighborhood came over to the house and they pulled the kitchen table into the living room and we all sat down and started to play D&D. They handed me this character. I still remember it. It was Ermus the Unseen, which began my being a thief, which you know, what are you going to do? I don't remember any of those kids or who they were or where they're at, but that started my D and D playing gate days. And it was all made possible because there was a parental unit in the house. Uh, so I sort of kind of get what it's like to not have parents. Uh, so, you know, helping out with this charity has, hasn't been, difficult for me i jumped right in there when i could and like i said because everybody was doing everything i got a chance to just sit back and be a cheerleader and, and root on yay we got another donation so that's been cool it's been great um i'm super happy to be here with uh arlen and i'm getting to play with sean the first time and steve the author of the games here and Always good to be back on the, the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. I'm not a regular, so this is really sweet. And, you know, any chance I get to hang out with uh, GM Hobbs is great. Agreed. With that being said, <laughs> I'm back in the Midlands with the superstar of the Hobbs and Fred's Twitch channel, Benra the Wonder Dog, and a sidekick, the Jorpson <laughs> Navid Oxwer. <laughs> which sort of translates into the English language as Thorson's a hunter-gatherer. And uh, my name is Brian Tracy Colt, and this is our special Midlands Comes to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel charity stream. I'm super happy to be here. Awesome. We're thrilled to hey, be man. able to get to this. Hobbs, and uh, one yeah, before I throw it to you, brother. Hobbs. I just want to say it once again, a very, a huge, huge thank you for you for organizing the, the session and for agreeing to run the session today, too. You are truly the best. Even Anna's excited. I know. <laughs> Anna Banana's right here for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is awesome. Anna the dog there? Anna the dog is right next to me right now, yeah. Hi. Sweet. I realized that I had a whole nother group of things that I could have been showing your guys' lovely faces while everyone was talking. <laughs> so, Steve, did you want to say anything to all your fans out there? Well, why don't we just do this? Why oh, don't you guys uh... introduce yourselves? Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and your characters? We can just do that. And, Steve, we will start with you, sir. All right. Um... Yeah, my name's Steve Grudzicki. I'm the author of Low Fantasy Gaming, or not really. I mean, I just grabbed a whole bunch of other things and threw them all together, but you know you know what I mean. <laughs> and I am playing Nordak, the short-sighted. He is a fighter. Uh, I think he's only run... He's only been in <clears throat> um, one of Hobbs's games, uh, I believe, so he's only got a tiny bit of experience. Uh, and he despite being short-sighted, likes to carry his heavy crossbow. So, uh, yeah, let's hope everything goes well. I make no promises. <laughs> awesome. Arlen. Uh, hi, I'm Arlen, and uh, I'm just happy to be here. It's great to be invited for another charity session, so thanks, Brian. Um, I am playing Borgar, who is a big, uh, heavy armor axe wielding fighter who hacks things to bits with his axes um because that's apparently all of my characters are like that apparently um but no i'm i'm happy to be here great fun to play in the midlands always and uh yeah i think that's it for me Arlen is a podcaster as well and it's called live from pelham's wasteland you should go check it out <laughs> sean p kelly Hey everyone, I'm Sean. I'm from the uh, podcast Gaming and BS. Uh, we talk about RPGs and the like. Thank you so much for the invitation, Hobbs and Kevin and uh, Brian. Thanks for making this happen. 
So uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Broker Bennett, uh, a magic user, a male magic user, uh, Argosin. Um, and uh, this should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So what Sean doesn't know, I made this character for him. It's a magic user, but in most games, it would be considered a cleric. Because in this game, magic users can be used as clerics or magic user, where the cultist class is more of like a paladin. So that's the way that's built. Who we got left? I guess you have not introduced your character yet, Kevin. Me? Uh, so hi. So my name is Kevin Madison. I am the host of the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. Oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an inch, man. I'll take a mile. Uh, the I, I'm playing today a um, an artificer, actually, which is a really cool class uh, that I... It's something that is unique to low fantasy gaming. You get to kind of cobble together weird technology and stuff, and I appreciate Hobbs allowing me to play one because I know it's limited in his campaign. Uh, and I'm playing an old guy from elsewhere named Zedekar. Awesome. So here we are in the actual table. Uh, no, I'm not recording. Uh, my recording doesn't work. And I also forgot to unmute myself earlier. So if you want to know what that's like. So the whole time when I was talking, muted. So... <laughs> <laughs> People at the game road are completely used to that, though, so nothing <laughs> new there. Um, uh, so this, normally in a Midlands game, we would start with the splash page, and then we would head into uh, the maps once everyone was decided where they were going to go. Mm -hmm. So just while uh, we're Hops. thinking about it, let's have a look at Vorngard. Uh, Hobbs, uh, before, as you're going things. through this, too, do you mind giving a quick um, explanation for what the uh, West Marchers uh, style of play is? Oh boy, jeez! I don't know if I want to get nutshell, that. baby. Oh, Got to know so elevator usually, pitch. Usually, the reason there uh, there were so many tokens on there and so many players in this game is is because it is a West March open table game. So I don't usually decide what's going to happen like you would in a traditional campaign. The players gather themselves up. I don't do it. The players decide what they're going to do. I do not do that. Uh, I do prepare the things whatever they are interested in. And then we schedule a day and then we just get to it. So it's all player driven. Mm -hmm. That's player driven and character driven. So I would say that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is Vorngard. This campaign is uh, takes place in the northern edge of the northwestern edge of the Midlands. And so far, this is session number 20, actually. And so far, uh, no one has traveled very far into the midlands themselves but the reason for this particular session which will make itself clear is we're going to open up a new area in the midlands campaign so that's pretty exciting to me uh, what i'd like to do before i explain what uh, vorngard is is we're going to do a kevin madison and open a scene as the game starts and it doesn't start in vorngard it starts in a vaulted uh chamber well appointed um very open and there seems to be some sort of council that's happening and one of the player characters is there and that would be uh bennett is there and he's with there's a bunch of older men they all seem they're well dressed they seem to be merchants of some sort and this is actually the quartermasters of faction that's in um north uh northgate and the people, the leader of the council is explaining to Bennett how he, um, they want him, Broker Bennett. So the cleric of our, the clerics of, geez, now I forget it. forgot what it was. Our, it's, so I get confused between Argosa and Arcona. Argona. Who's the, who's the pre, or the god of uh, trade, Steve? Oh, uh, health, wealth, and happiness is uh, Argona. Yeah, Argona. See, that's what I thought. Yeah, so he is actually a priest of Argona, and uh, they are uh, sometimes used by the quartermasters in order to do trade deals and stuff. And um, he mentions there's a rough-looking uh, Northman type person in the room, and they're they're kind of arguing with each other. And finally, they say, "Fine, we will send a trade delegation." to north uh to vorngard and it's your job to get them uh in with the herders and growers common and from there on we can make a trade 
And uh, this is Bennett. I guess I'm really just exposing. There's not really a scene, I guess. I don't really know how much art. Exposing. Hey, yo. Oh. Just give me that kind of game. I love it. Uh, All right. Pants off, dance off. I can't wait. It's every, it's every kind of it's every kind of game for sure. Uh, also in the room is another person in red robes. All right. Let me see here. Here it is. This is, uh, the rest of the group may not know this person yet, but, uh, uh, broker Bennett is going to know because this is principal Morris, who is one of the anointed and the, um, uh, the right hand men or psychophants of the stargazer who is the ruler of Northgate and, uh, Principal Morris uh, gives a sneer to um, Broker Bennett when because they were chosen over the anointed to make this trade delegation happen. And so obviously Principal Morris is not happy about that. And uh, Broker Bennett can see that he now has an enemy and which will likely show up again. <laughs> All right. So uh, what are you laughing about? <laughs> Sean just gave you the steel stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was in a different window. So uh, Kevin's character, as he mentioned, uh, Zed, Zedekar, is also appointed to assist in this and basically hired by the brokers to protect Bennett. So um, we're going to skip over the journey to Northgate. You guys made it there and you've made it. Uh, you trait you uh interacted with uh rogorov who is the leader of the herders and growers common and you met up with um uh, master arvid who is actually a trader from northgate and he's the one that started this whole uh situation with getting the getting this trade involved and make this trade happen and basically kind of you know be allies as opposed to the vor vornari just constantly raiding in northgate and the people of northgate so um, it is then Master Arvid who hires the others, Nordak, Borgar, and Thorson, uh, and friend Wick, to help make sure that you guys can make your way down. Uh, this might be a good time to show this off, where you guys are headed, okay? Okay. This is a lot more exposition than normally I normally do. All right, so this, I'll oh, make this a little bigger. <laughs> We've had someone already wish that uh, oh, you is. only kill a couple of us today, Hobbs, <laughs> in chat. <laughs> well, that's nice of them. I don't expect a lot of dying to go on, but hey, you never know. <laughs> you never know. So here's a map always of the area. Say that, and then, you know. People Skin die. Mind controlled, and he stabs people in the back. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is a, a large map of uh, Argosa, otherwise known as the Midlands. And this is Vorngard, where this token is. And it sets on the northern shore of the Siltwater. These are 10 mile hexes. So it's about 10 miles wide and uh, 20 miles long. And then it leads on to a river through the Wistwood that eventually arrives in um, Lake Argosa, which is a massive inner lake. Is this uh, the map from the Midlands book? Uh, um, yes. This yeah. map is somewhere. I don't know where. Okay. Steve? Um, no, it's separate. The, the map in the Midlands book was by Randy M. Um, mm, yeah. That's the black and white. And uh, oh, actually, no, there was a color version of that too, but this one is um, John Stevenson. Okay, it's a great looking map. He, uh, so, so yeah, the it's ADCA did a really fantastic job. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, that is your plan, and um, you guys don't get to decide how you're going to go there because you have been introduced to a captain, Captain Gunthar of the Wave Cutter, and he has been hired. Whoa, what the heck is going on here? There we go. He's also been hired to help you guys to go to make your way down the silt water and into the lake. Right, what kind shoot. of uh, ship is the wave cutter? Is it, I see a lot of long ships in here. Something similar to that. Yeah. The long ship for sure. Okay, cool. Yep, exactly. 
right now my I'm going to show you a picture here, but my cursor is ah here we go not uh, helping me. Okay. I can do this. I forgot. So here is Captain Gunther. He's kind of a morose, uh, solemn captain who is known uh, for surviving <laughs> he really raids like a sad sack. <laughs> with his men. <laughs> Looks like he's had better days. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why the long face, Captain Gunther? Jeez. Looks like a typical Venari to me. Mm. There you go. So uh, you have Wick with you. You guys already have your provisions that were provided by the Herders and Growers Common and Master Arvid. And so really all that's left is to make the trip to Northgate. Uh, Bennett, you are also, uh, <coughs> you have a small chest uh, with has wrappings which has all the contracts that you've made, um, and that's loaded onto the wave cutter. Uh, is there anything anyone wanted to do in uh, Vorngard? You should probably say no, <laughs> but I should let you anyway. Uh, I, I don't good, no, no. <laughs> you, you did get anyone the else? messages of the stuff that I put for Wick, so she had some things. Uh, sure. Yeah, you're going to okay. have to take care of Wick. You wanted Wick, you got her. All right, or them. You got them. Mm. Wick is a sort of a... I should find... I should probably get that out because I don't have it. Oh, yeah. So she's sort of a, a androgynous-looking um, person who off, carries a shovel and often says a shovel will sort it. That's her calling. She is really... a. I don't know what you gave her exactly, but she's not a fighter or in any way. She's a non-combatant that uh, has traveled with Thorson and Fenner in the past. Okay. All right. So here we go. We have found our way on to the Stiltwater. Oh, this is big. Well, so here's a picture of the Stiltwater with the ship there. Hey, and so, how, uh, how far along yeah. did you did you say this was this was going to be a journey as far as miles go uh a lot pretty far let's look i i don't i didn't really have the my it, miles figured out so the intent was so this is a 10 mile hex map right right so if you could fly as the as the crow flies mm -hmm. yeah as the manacore flies it's about 64 miles okay so but obviously you're going to have a different me method of traversing that. So, sure. so you have been uh, on the water on the uh, stilt water for uh, a day or so. And um, I have you guys in the front. If you'd like to be somewhere else, you can certainly uh, put yourself somewhere else, but this is uh, a craft that, you know, you don't always have to oar because the sail is going to be up. But when you do, you know, you just kind of sit there. It doesn't, it's not like it has some really awesome appointed quarters or anything like that. It's a, it's a Viking reavers or a Nor a Vornari reaver ship. Okay. All right. So you guys good with where you are? Anyway, you guys are sailing okay. along and um, the captain calls off. He's like, uh, all right, hey, we're going to have to stow down the sails and you can hear they're creaking the cra the water is starting to crest and he points and he says there is a storm coming so the men the crew you guys aren't expected to do any of this stuff you're just uh the trip the chest also is in the front there you can see there's some boxes and stuff all under like a uh whale skin tarp or something to help try and protect it from the water as it comes over um and why don't you guys uh, all make like a detection check? I can accommodate. Let's see. I have so, that. Nice. So if you don't have the skill, it's not like you can't make the check anyway. You would just make the intelligence check and then it would, uh, all the skill does give is a plus one to the make success of the opportunity. And this is all roll under. So if your intelligence was a 12, if you have detection, you'd have a 13 or less. Um, uh, isn't it, isn't it perception usually, Steve? Yeah, not... sorry, sorry. I that's yeah, okay. I... <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't really be intelligence. It should I'm be perception misleading. if you don't have it. So, uh, and that's okay. <laughs> perception, perception. <laughs> Terrible okay, so, fail. Uh, 
I detected the hell Looks out like of that one stuff. person. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as you guys are there, you're looking around. Zedekar, uh, not only looking towards the wind, he actually looks back. And behind you, you can see just on the edge of the horizon, another ship following you, it looks like coming north okay. uh, towards the south, towards I'll you guys. Tap on uh, Bennett's shoulder. Something comes from behind! What do you do, Bennett? I look. All right, Bennett glances back, and uh, you see his face blanch as you're almost certain that the trireme behind you, uh, by the colors, is an anointed ship. So Steve's Bennett, Steve's nodding. All right, it's actually happening now. <laughs> I have a uh, robust and cool. My crafted thing, one of my crafted things, is uh, a musket, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to get to the back and start getting set up to take a shot once we're in range, I'm happy to do so. He's also happy to sit out. <laughs> so. so, what you guys know about the anointed is that some of them uh, are they actually like drink the lifeblood of this guy, the stargazer who is a powerful sorcerer. And uh, so it's, and this looks like a big ship. Uh, so it's pretty obvious even to the not the smallest seaworthy of you, that if you got into any sort of battle, you would be destroyed. Mm. No doc helps an with the road. ship. You like, muted yourself at the end as you were pointing sean Did I, I got i think yeah. i got a bad connection here no that's not good no. so uh when you guys feel gunther oh woe to us all then this anointed ship is surely our doom but i've been waiting for it boys so be ready if they come uh so they they start rowing so what are you guys gonna do to try and see if they can help speed. <laughs> Encourage them to row faster. <laughs> row faster, <laughs> man! Snapping the, snap the way, but you can see as that's happening, uh, an actual storm is coming in, and the ship now is kind of raising and hitting over these cresting waves. Water is sloshing over the sides and battering you. Um, at, uh, at Thorson's feet is Fenner kind of whimpering and not used to being on the sea and uh, whimpering beneath his feet as you're adjusting your oars and trying to make your way through. And th at this time, uh, so you guys have been fighting and it's like shifted into the night. And even with all the work and Gunther's expert seamanship, it still seems like the anointed craft is uh, closing, but it'll take them a while. Like you could it possibly get to the river before they even reach you. Uh, but at that point, this is when Nordak hears, it sounds like the shifting of the boat and something in the cargo in the uh, front, I don't know what the front portion is, is that uh, the four? Prow. Yeah, the four, right? Yeah. The prow, yeah, and the prow, you hear like a breaking of something. Like something breaks, like the sound of a glass or clay or something. Nordak hears that? Yep. Okay, he, he'll Like you guys are jumping up in is. there and the... The, you know, the cargo is smashing around and bouncing up against each other. And when that happens, you hear something break underneath the tarp. Okay, he'll, um, he'll, he'll hold on to the boat as it's rocking away and moves forward and tries to have a look under that tarp to see what's broken. He doesn't want it to be like, I don't know, a canister of oil or something and it might cause trouble later. All right, so, uh, yeah, so Nordak gets up and he's like, Stay your place, man. You hear Gunthar yell out from the back. You know, he's nervous. But you got, you're got you a Vornari, so your abilities to yeah. uh, make your way along the ship, even in a storm, uh, are probably all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, it's not evident. Like I said, it's dark, and you guys are, like, sailing through uh, on a large lake. So it's not immediately evident. So why don't you go ahead and make a perception mm -hmm. or detection check? Whoa. Aye. Yeah, not his best trait. He is there a little lant lantern or something nearby that can, he can shine? He can grab from someone and shine in 
Uh, I'm sure there's some, there's like a lantern in those belongings. Yeah. And you, when you're there, even over the smell of the, of the river of the, of this, of this water. So this is a, a lake. So it's probably not much sea. It's not like it's salt water or anything like that. This would be a freshwater lake. And so, um, you can kind of like smell something acrid and pungent. Mm. So you guys see uh, Nordak, he just jumps up and like pulls the tarp back as the ship is shifting and waves are crashing in over top of you. Yeah, I just yell out something like, something stinks in here. And he, like, I'm <laughs> got the lantern and I'm just looking at, I, I, I don't know what, I can't see properly. I'm get. I don't know, that's all I do. So he's, he, he's like oh, pulling out a lantern and he's trying to get a lantern going like maybe he like pulls the tarp over himself as he tries to light the lantern <laughs> to block the water and eventually you can see a flaring of light coming and this is when you can hear gunthar he's like moving through the back he's like oh take the prow and he comes moving in there it seems to be listing he's like complaining about the ship and the way that it's performing as he makes his way forward and that's when the tarp comes back and Nordak peers. And what you guys see is there is something amongst the cargo. Is it an outboard motor? It is not. <laughs> Nuts! Nor is it a cannon of any sort. <laughs> guys, my plan's shot. Anyone else got ideas? <laughs> oh, it doesn't. It looks uh... like I didn't put this in. I thought I did. So uh, it looks like there's something that is uh, purple. And it is like attached to the bottom of the ship or the, that's the bottom of the lower area, not the bottom, but inside on the, on the floor almost. I thought I had a thing and it looks like a massive purple amoeba. Uh, once again, tap on Bennett's shoulder. That should not be there, should it? No, what in God's name is that? Uh, Captain? So there's a... <laughs> yeah, Gunthar has been moving up. He's complaining and shifting. Oh, keep it level, boys. Okay. So you guys all see that there. Nordak, okay. uh, what are you going to do? Have we ever seen Ooh, something like I this think, before? Um, so it's like a purple blob. Um, let's, I would give, uh, you got anyone who is not from Northgate. So anyone, but, uh, Bennett and, uh, Zed would have to have a great success of a general lore. Anyone else, uh, just needs to, those two need a success of general lore. Anyone else would need okay. a great success if they want to maybe know what it is. <laughs> great success. My oh, old my enemy, purple goo. <laughs> Oh no! Nice, All right, so uh, hanging out in the strumpet. I know nobody everything. else wants to roll. All right, so you guys have heard this before. This is actually like some of the life's blood of the stargazer, purple slime. Some can say that they can control it. They must have snuck it onto the ship somehow. Don't get and it in your uh, mouth. It's kind of <laughs> Steve, what are you shaking your head about? I'm always curious what uh, Steve. <laughs> I, nothing. But so what, Nordak what? just stumbles backwards. He's because it's moving, right? It's is it yeah. moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's moving, bubbling but about, it's like but the bottom of it is like seems like it's thing. melting. So he just stumbles backwards and probably falls over the guy behind him, and he just yells out, "Hey, watch by it. the deep one! What the? What is that?" And then I'm looking around for like fire, or t is there like anybody got a torch? Probably not, because we're in this. You're on, on a boat that's in the wet. Middle of the, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to pull out a torch to um. Well, you to have a lantern. You have a lantern oh, in yeah. your hand. Yeah, but I don't want to break the. I don't know how many lanterns I've got. I don't want to break it. I, I, I put that one down, and I'm trying to get out a torch. That's what I do. Okay. All right, uh, Borgar. Well, why don't we just roll initiative? So the way we roll initiative in this game is, um, all you do is you click the button that says initiative, but. It uses your uh, dexterity. And mm -hmm. so if you succeed, you go before the creature. If you go, if you fail, you go after. Success. I, I don't even know. I can't tell initiative, initiative. Looks like Sean made a intelligence check. Poor <laughs> Sean. <laughs> oh, sure, it's held Clearly good, intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> that was an intelligent move. Borgar, all right. 
success. Oh, it looks like we got a great success from Thorson. Thorson, you see uh, Nordak, he stumbles back against this post. And you can see this thing. It's easily like four feet around and is covering like a whole area. It seemed to have oozed past the cargo and it's actually seemed to be dissolving at the ship. But parts of it are kind of bubbling up and amoeba-like fists seem to be starting to flail around and form. Have I heard of ever heard of anything in the strumpet about how to deal with purple slime on a boat? You had a great success, right? So yeah. let me read. Oh, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure no one's ever actually had purple slime on a boat, so this might be a first. But um, so I'll ask the captain. What? What should we do, Captain? <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> and he doesn't know. He's never. By the deep one, what sort of deviltry is this? Have you brought this doom upon the wave, Cutter? It's your boat. <laughs> that's, that's what he's saying. All right, so <laughs> you don't do anything? You're basically asking others? I think I'm going to go ahead and do the thing that I do and, and uh, follow Nordak's lead to try to start fumbling for a torch. Okay. And I, I'm always awesome. going to make sure that I'm um, right behind Borgar. All right, so that's where you are right now, so we're good to go. Uh, Fenner is uh, whimpering uh, beneath your feet. Let's see, who's next? Uh, looks like, oh, that was a lore check. Steve, what are you, Nordak, are you doing anything else? Sure uh, you go. No, yeah, go ahead. No, no, yep, yep, I'm trying to get my torch on, set my torch on, uh, on fire. All right, so you could, there's probably a hook right there by that uh, forward uh, at ma mast for the lantern itself, if you want to put it. So it's like jangling next by, and both yep, uh, right, right. Nordak, both Nordak and Thorson are pulling out torches. Um, Borgar. So I'm going to reach down to my feet and grab my shield and pull out a light axe from my belt and kind of take a defensive stance. All right, so you're just kind of standing over top of your bench where you're at. You're not moving. Well, I think I think that's all I can do in one turn to grab both items because. Nah, you can move a little bit too. Okay, well then I'll I'll start moving up towards it. Not all the like... way, but enough to be kind of in the lead. All right. Uh, Zedekar, I can move through um, allies, right? Yep. Okay, so. What you see is um, he has some kind of uh, contraption on his forearm that looks like a modified gauntlet. It looks way too big for him because uh, he's a scrawny old guy. But he uh, uh, turns to Bennett and says, stay behind me. And he will move forward. And then he hits the gauntlet against the ground. And there is, here we go, a shock wave. That hits it, and it needs to make a luck con save to resist, or it's thrown 2d4 times 5 feet. Okay. So that could affect, like, the cargo and stuff that's all there, right? <laughs> what are you going to do? Which is, as, so as long as Bennett's got his box. Or is our, did, the uh, chest with the contracts are there. Well, <laughs> they hired Bennett. <laughs> you know? Guess we'll have to see how that, that goes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You can't unring the thunder gauntlets. <laughs> All right. So let me find my sheet here, my cheat sheet. There it is. Oh, here's the thing, though. Sheety? It hits a single target. So I don't know if it would affect everything Oh, nice. Else. So you can just make it be right him. Yeah, no, yep. that's good then. Yep. I want a thunder gauntlet. <sighs> I want two of them. <laughs> then you can't have a fender. Then you this can't have a fender. It for you me. Don't get it hit points. Hope you guys are really impressed with that thunder gun because that's kind of it for Zedekar for today. Yeah. <laughs> which which save was it? You guys have this now. Uh, con. Uh, luck, luck con. Luck con. Luck con. All right. So his con is a fifteen. That's what a plus two. Fifteen plus two. Yes, Steve. All right. Good. <laughs> So he must go minus two. If worse comes to worse, you can launch yourself, DM Kev. 
Uh oh. He needed to be under a six. So the wave kind of just oh, ripples shit. as it affects it. <laughs> oh, I vastly it overestimated splits. this. And it looks like it splits into two things. Oh, I've made it worse. <laughs> 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 and they're just kind of like slimed up the side of the aft. And you can see like some blackish fumes and the smell of uh, something caustic seems to be affecting the boat from it. Oh. All right. Nice. <laughs> uh, Bennett. So I cast Hand of the Void. All right. And that what does is that do? A, it's a range 60 foot spell, duration 1d6 times 10 minutes. It allows me to create a, a hand, it looks like. You coalesce an invisible force that can do most things a normal hand is capable of. So I can I can lift things up to twenty pounds or perform precise actions such as picking locks, etc. And then I can also attack with it as normal. Mm. So I cast that spell. Um, and then I'm going to ha I'm going to have it pick up. Is there is there an object like an ore or something I can maybe pick up with it? All right. So I think you're confused. No. If you actually look at your character, I already I gave you your spells. Oh, you gave me the spells, man. Yeah, that's what happens Ooh. when you get a pre-gen. All right. All right. <laughs> I was like, I don't think yeah. I gave you that. <laughs> Here I am trying to look at all the spells, thinking I'm going to pick one. Oh. All right. So you're talking about the um, under, under the spell features. casting. Yeah, yeah. Those are the three spells you have. That would have been cool, though. Sorry, oh, man. Man, no kidding. All right. In that case. I will do. Um... It's like, oh, boy, did I give that to you? I don't remember putting that on that character sheet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hand of the void. <laughs> oh god damn! We should have. Uh, so much for that. Maybe. Wah, wah. Um, <laughs> I am. I'll go up and attack one of them. I guess. <laughs> I get the. You're just the, uh, not the first time you like had your crossbow save. or. Oh, go ahead, Hobbs. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot. Oh, it with, I'm gonna try shooting it with my crossbow. That's what I'll do. All right, all right. One, one that's closest to an edge, whatever one that may be. Hopefully, knocking right. it off. All right, so AC eleven is what you need to beat. Okay, I succeed. Five damage according to the results. All right. All right, I have been put in check. I, I now know my ultimate power is not what I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, good. What do you mean, sir? Welcome to the Midlands. <laughs> <laughs> you said you did five damage? All right, yeah, so it does yes. splash some of this stuff off, and it looks, uh, it does seem like the phys the kinetic force of the crossbow bolt affected it and whatever un unholiness is controlling this has lost control of the bit that's been splashed away all right is that everybody yes all right like i said so both of these things have these pseudopods that have uh moved up and so they are going to strike All right, well, they both attack Borgar. Pass Zed. I don't know if he, like, shifted around <laughs> behind one of those masks or what. No, but, take uh... me! <laughs> Curse so they're kind of splashed up. <laughs> they're all I'll step up closer so they can get at me. Oh, one of them got a 19 and one of them got a 1. So mm -hmm. when a 1 happens, that means that second one... One of you two guys can make an attack at it when it fumbles. Borger, I'll, I'm going to, not having it's seen one, your character sheet, I'm going to assume that you're better at it than I am. <laughs> so, I, Why don't I make the attack? Good. Go for it. So that's the other one, but the first one does hit you, Borger. First one does hit me. That is correct. So I take some damage. Five points. All right. Nice. That hit the other one, though, and you did three points to it. 
because it's only got an AC of 11. Hmm. So this other one looks quite diminished. It looks just like a globular fist standing up there. Nice. Now, a Can we try to rescue thing. exploit on Borgar? Within 25 feet. Yeah, why don't you tell me how you're going to do that? Yeah, that's always the fun part about it, isn't it? Especially on a ship. So if it fails, there could be consequences. Borgar's second level, he could take five points. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Borgar takes five points and he attacks the other one. Let's do initiative again. Sorry, Arlen. I... Tough. Yeah, a natural 19 on certain weapons triggers. Oh, shit. Okay. Special. Yeah, yeah. This thing has a special thing for but its it does. Yeah, this creature has a 19 as well. You are correct. Good work, sir. Let me see what this uh, 19 is. Oh is my it goodness! Consume geriatric, because that won't end well for a set of cards. So, uh, uh, why don't you make a luck check, Borgar, and you tell me what you'd rather have: your armor be affected or your light axe be affected by the corrosion of this creature? So, uh, I'll make the luck check, and then that's a success. Yes. No, you're supposed to tell me what the success was. If, which oh, would be the oh, one you want. Would, oh, if you fail, uh, it would be the I other one. Say, I'm sorry. Um, I would much rather have the light axe be consumed than my armor be consumed. Because oh, okay. I have two extra light axes. Mm. All right, good. So that's what it is. And so you can see the, where you'd struck it, some of that purple slime on there, and it's just corroded into flakes and just kind of crumbles oh, away. Yeah, I love this monster. <laughs> monster, Borgar, I'm so glad it's attacking you. I am nothing but like metal you know, gadgets. <laughs> I'm a smorgasbord for these things. Right, here we go. Glad it's attacking. Let's make Borgar a uh, okay initiative. Leave me An initiative. alone for once. So you, <laughs> yeah, everyone, roll initiative, and you can hear Gunthar. The ship seems to be listing. T change course for the roost. So it seems like they're heading somewhere else. All right, we got some great successes here. Oh, a lot of them. Borgar is up there. Why don't you go ahead, Borgar? All right. Steve, did I'm you make a draw. check? No, failed, failed. Oh, okay. I don't even see it. Reach down, oh, draw another four. light axe. Try to whack the wounded one. All right. Do, do, do. No. Mm. This is Zedekar or Broker Bennett, either one. Okay, the injured one, I'll be very quick here. Um, I Faster than you'd think this old coot could move, he whips out a short sword. And while he briefly considers retreating, he remembers he's being paid. And attacks. Terribly! <laughs> Terribly. Well, you didn't roll one, so that's okay. Okay. All right, so uh, I think it is the... Broker Bennett's turn. Uh, so if I have a clear shot at the remainder, I think there's like one remaining, right? Nope, there's still two. There's still two? Okay. I'm going to shoot uh, the same one if I can get a shot at him. Well, they're both in melee. melee so uh, in melee in this game is uh, if you miss, then there's a percentage that you'll hit an ally. You know. It's 50-50 <laughs> to hit this thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to inflict more damage upon the party than these uh, jelly jellyfish creatures. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to see if I can position myself better to maybe, if they fling one off, I shoot it. That's what I'm going to do. So, I will prep an action that if they fling one off of them, then I will attempt to shoot it. Can I do that? Sorry. Say again, Hobbs. They, that's what I said. Say again. <laughs> oh. Am I, am I coming in broken up? No, no. I just got distracted momentarily. Oh, no worries. I know I know how it goes. I am going to hold out my crossbow and wait until one of the individuals in melee fling, maybe fling it off of them or break off of them, and then I'll shoot. And if that, obviously okay. that doesn't happen, then I don't get to go. 
that's fine. Yeah, I'll just get put you like a reaction situation. Sounds good. All right, nice. Who el- who else uh succeeded? And I look behind us. Is the ship gaining on us? Not it's still like way out there, and the only reason you can see it is like the lightning that happens occasionally. It's not that close. I mean, this is all very, very quick. All right. So who's up? I didn't hear anyone say. Does anyone have an initiative or did everyone else fail? Nordak, you failed and um, somebody failed. else failed, right? Mm-hmm. Thorson, Thorson failed. All right. So <clears throat> these creatures are going to attack with their pseudopods. The heck? There's the attack rolls. Let's see who they attacked. <laughs> 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 oh, both both on Borgar again, but a thirteen doesn't hit, does it, Borgar? Uh, not unless it's modified really heavily. All right, it's not. All okay. right, so um, I think that means it's Nordak's turn. All righty, have I got my torch lit? Yes, yet, or... I have. Okay, I'm. Uh, uh, can I sort of hmm, can I squeeze in there? I don't know. Next to the sure, to my but if eyes? you can, but if you fumble somehow, then people could get knocked overboard <laughs> old man in the water i'm willing to take that i don't care he says <laughs> jump in and try and plant my plant my flaming torch on the is one of them injured do we injure one one on the this one i did i did injure okay. one of them mm-hmm. right okay he'll try and smack that one with his torch here we go oh Ooh. nice so i just Hits. said i just said d3 d3 for a torch i don't know hobbs up to you and then that's fine with me so yeah, so you put it on there, whack it, her torch thumps into him, sparks fly off, and the purple splatters about. Uh, Thorson. Yeah, Thorson. I'm gonna take my torch, run up. It's make probably up. a little tight now. I minor martial exploit, leap over everyone, and land over here. And then stab it with my torch. So you have to hit and make a dex check. Sure. <laughs> if he dives overboard, this is going to... What if you... Oh, Thank for a hell of a charity this, session. This overboard. <laughs> wow! Splish. <laughs> Danger, Will Robson. <laughs> okay. Make your dex check. How about better yet? I <laughs> oh, <Denver amazing. laughs> a shove up and put him on the other side so everyone gets a, a bonus for the next attack round without him falling over. Very, very difficult to it's very difficult to get past everyone, the purple slime and the cargo that's all st- stacked up there. I don't have control of Fenris token. So Orson uh, offers norm. a word of encouragement. To all of his companions uh, on the front line. Hobbs, to make it easier, because he was further back before, could he have grabbed like a rope from the sail and kind of like swung out the side pirate style? And sure, know, I, sure. I, t- I totally thought about jumping onto the the sail and, and doing some kind of acrobatics, but here we are. Mm. All right. You don't want to? I mean, all, all it is is a failed check. You know, what's the chances that you'd fail at something like that? A pretty you good. Can also hand the torch up, you can also hand the torch up to Nordak if you want for like you the next attack or whatever you want, man. Sure. If anybody wants a torch, here it is. All right. So I think it's initiative Fenrir time again. not jump through and just kind of squeak through to here? Help with the Ooh. initiative rolls? Uh, if you can succeed at a dex check minus two, <laughs> you have his dex, right? Yeah. Yeah. Suspense is killing me. That All right. Nice. Yeah. So you guys feel Fenner. Fenner, you know, parkours <laughs> through <laughs> the combatants. Past the cargo and is uh, barking madly, drooling on the other purple slime. <laughs> roof, roof. He can attack the if dog. you want. He can attack too. If I'm you not want. sure if he. Kind of weird to bite into purple slime. Sees purple slime as a food group, but sure. 
Oh. Oh wait, I, and I attack with oh. advantage, but that's a hit. Welcome yeah, to the Midlands, tennis. purple slime. Meet Fenrir the Wonder Dog. Okay, so that's one d six. That's one. It's just max. It's one d six oh. plus one, so you do seven points to it. So no. Fenner jumps in there and grabs a purple slime and shakes his head and it just goes splattering everywhere. <laughs> All right, now you can roll initiative. <laughs> By the deep one, that dog is a true beast. <laughs> oh, initiative, hold on. Roll an initiative. Why don't you go ahead, Borgar? Fenrir the All Wonder right. Dog. I'm gonna do my best to whack this remaining slime. Oh, that's definitely a hit. Mm. So between Borgar and uh, Fenner, this last slime is is destroyed. But they are the two best All characters right, in the so... Menon's game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have anything uh, like you can, he's like, you can feel that the ship has changed course and maybe just maybe you can see land in that direction. So he's like, I think we can outrun them. We'll drop you off at the roost and turn back and hold them off if we can. Right lads to the deep one. Yeah, all of his men, oh, they seem like they're some kind of suicidal berserkers or something. Okay. Where is this, this roost is, that is there... they speak of? This is really the uh, first time can... we've seen. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, the first time we've seen a river raiders. Up close. So that was cool. Thanks, GM Hobbs. Oh, everyone can carry on. Or right. playing. All right. So uh, you guys can go ahead and make a general lore check. Okay. Ooh. All right, so anyone who succeeds, which seems like quite a few of you, all know that uh, <laughs> the roost is... Um, Nordak has a brain aneurysm. Roost... <laughs> <laughs> it's like his normal, though, I think. <laughs> the, the roost is an outpost on the southern e southwestern edge of uh, the, the Silt Lake. Is that what it is? Silt Lake? Now I feel like I'm calling it the wrong thing. You stilt. It's called the Silt Lake or the Stilt Lake? Stilt water. There we go. Stilt water, that's it. That's yeah. it the Silt water, not Stilt. Silt. The Silt water. And uh, you guys know that you're not quite sure what the outpost is for, uh, but it's maybe just six years old, if that. Most likely a mixed group, possibly mostly Midlanders. But uh, the great success there, Broker Bennett is aware of two things that it is a merchant and it is merchant um corona yep corona corona tamsin that is the overseer and recently they've unearthed some ruins and so some people have been heading there to gather stone and uh search the ruins the second thing that you know is that the roost is protected by a creature and uh, woe is to they who upset the protector of the roost. Hmm. We're not worried. We got Fenrir right. the Wonder Dog. Yeah, I think this dog's got Excellent. this. Excellent. We're... <laughs> We're good. Without question. Is yeah. there anything like, Bennett, how do you feel about all this stuff happening? I mean, are you interested in like checking to make sure the chest is okay, that has these contracts that you're supposed to be saving? Or Yes. I want to make sure all the goods are still intact and that they haven't been stomped on or broken out of anything. All right. Does anyone else want to do anything before we shift from this scene? I kind of like to take a short rest after the fight to try to get some of my hit points back. Find a okay. bench to sit down and try to, you know, patch myself up a little bit. All right. I can I can understand that. How many checks do you want to use? I am just going to use the one because I only need hit points back. On roll 20. Right. And I got to make a will check to get him. And I made it. 
So I get half plus my con bonus. Uh, do I? For, I got a rules question. Uh, for my artificer thing, that's a, a ability. I have to make a will check during short rest to recharge that. Is that right? Yep. Right. But you have to choose how many of the checks you're going to use. One, two, mm -hmm. or three. And you get a bonus one for your con. One, two. Oh, because I can make three checks per day, right? Three checks per session. Per session. As far as the Midlands goes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I will use one because otherwise I don't get to use my boomy stick anymore. Let's see here. So number one, look at that. Nice. So nice yeah, you work. have that ability, but see, now you can no longer do one check. You only have two checks or three checks in the future. Psh, I only needed one. That's right. You're good. <laughs> You're only gonna need one next time too. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, so it's tense and continually people are looking back, sharing stories of the horrors of the anointed and, uh, rumors that everyone's heard and, uh, how, how they, um, do the bidding of their chosen one, Sura Gathkasar or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, Steve. That got a little too much for me. What? <laughs> we're, we're pretty scary too, right? We're, we're big, bad Vernari Raiders. Maybe I can raise morale a bit and tell them stories about, you know, these pansy little Midlanders getting eaten up by Vernari longships. Sure. Yeah. Get them yeah, get man, that's... excited since they're going to do their heroic last stand anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have fun storming the castle sounds like a uh it sounds like we should do some kind of check here man i Maybe so i we'll have go. leadership as a charisma perfect skill. make a leadership roll hell yeah Ooh. nice all right yeah so they start up a chant you know they're they're singing of the northmen and die anointed a lot of that is in there as uh you guys r limp into the roost all right what is it it's 508 we've been going for one hour i have a couple things i need to learn how to do if anyone needs to go to the bathroom or anything uh let's let's take like a sure. one minute or something yeah, yeah. like that sean yeah, tell me how to start these bots yep so are you gonna go to a break yeah, screen or anything on twitch pops um sure awesome you hear me Still hear me, right? All right, Hobbs. So you, you. Ha you have to give access because those things aren't going to work unless you give moderator access to a Streamlabs bot. Where do I do that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Go I, it's been so long. Let me just Google it quick. Uh, adding. All right. While you're googling, I'm gonna pee. Okay. Streamlabs bot to Twitch. Hey, Brian, do I look choppy? You look choppy. Do I? No, you look fine. Okay. I mean, you know, it's Discord. When you move around, it has that, like, little blurry kind of a thing. Yeah, you guys don't have that, so I'm wondering what's going on. I got dropped out of Discord twice already today, but I don't know. You, that could have been... Didn't? When they were setting it up, who knows what what's going wrong with the, during the setup process. Hmm. 
Certainly don't. <laughs> hey, do you guys have the link to the charity handy by any chance? Somebody on Twitch is asking about it. Um, F. I can grab it. Hold on. I can grab uh, it. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll scroll. Mind. I'll scroll up and grab it. Belay that order, matey. Okay. Somebody wants to donate, and I just want to give them the right link. Oh, yeah, that's me. He already put it on there. No. Oh. All right. Uh, Sean, how do I do this thing? All right, ready? I am ready. <clears throat> uh, go to Twitch. Open a bot account. In order for you need to go to Twitch and open a separate bot account. So I think... Twitch on the Twitch actual... Yeah, they I can't do it from All right, the website. I think you have to go into creator dashboard. Let me double check. Um, where do you add the bot account? No, that's not right. Hold on a second. Oh, chat bot. I thought I had it up in front of me and then it's not right. Oh boy. Go to Twitch to open a bot account. In order for this to work, you need to go to Twitch and open a separate bot account. This right. isn't worth it. You guys are just going to have to do it. Return your but I have... What are we doing? Go ahead. Just put that information out there once in a while. I had it that it was going to run every once in a while, but it's not working, so... One, I don't have access you got to go into your i think your your literally your literal account settings and then once you're in there there's i think let me see connections is it no that's not it we can just we can just post it uh yeah. We'll just post it a obviously. couple times sure. throughout the course yeah, of the session. That's fine. Kevin, is it a, a, a link to, uh, sorry, it's a link to the charity? Or just the, the charity. Oh, yeah. Hobbs, what's this charity you're talking about? Maybe we should say something about it. Yeah. <laughs> Apple tickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Let us we'll know when you go in the back middle. live, Hobbs. What is the name of the town we just arrived oh, yeah. in? The Roost? The Roost. Roost, yeah. The Roost, okay. We're going back live, guys. Oh, sorry. He just told me to tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, and we will we'll give you just more information in the next hour or so about what the charity is. We'll do at the midstream break. Uh, we took a quarter break here. That's all I you did get. put a link. We put a link in there. All right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to. I. So he basically drops you guys off. At uh, Oops, I'm not there. zoom That's out here. I... What is this? I believe this is a town founded by Gabriel Pickard. <laughs> Indeed, uh, as <laughs> almost all the things I do, he, the ship was a Gabriel Pick Picard. Is what I say. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but um, so you guys arrive and almost immediately, uh. Gun, um, Gunthar takes his men and the wave cutter back out and says that we'll try and lead them away. And hopefully they were lost in uh, the morning fog that seemed to settle. So you guys have some time. I'll kind of nudge Borgar like, do your people oh, normally do this? <laughs> uh, we're in a little bit of unusual circumstances, but you know. So I'll turn to Bennett and say, we should hire more obvious. of them next time. <laughs> it's pretty obvious that this Gunthar has some kind of suicide mission and has lived past his uh, best days. <laughs> he did have a bit of a sad sack <laughs> in quality to his photo. <laughs> best of luck, Captain. Hey, All right, I'm so, sure. yeah. Do I know the uh, the demeanor of Corna Tanzan? She do I know her at all, or do I just know her? Just know the name. 
you just know of her and you've heard that she is uh, quite practical. That's good to know. Hmm. Yeah, I share this with uh, the, with individuals of the party and say, you know, kind of, I know who rule. I I know who's in charge of the roost. It's Corna Tanzan. I have heard that she's quite reasonable. Hmm. So you guys are down here. All that really happens is, oh. Uh, my character's basically checking his stuff and making sure that everybody's okay, and then just looks at Borgar like, well, but now. Subject you... to th Thorfinn's think... approval, I'm going to give the dog a treat, too, because he did a good job. All right. <laughs> he just oh boy. full speed bangs into you. Oh, uh, body slam. I'm under attack. Careful. <laughs> yeah, look what you've done. We will. <laughs> All the dogs are barking everywhere. Thorson, <laughs> Thorson looks at Borgar. Borgar just looks at Bennett like, okay, we're, we're here. What now? <laughs> so there are some common folk moving about uh, the roost. And you can see on the western edge is where the, uh, the southern edges of the sunstones uh, move up, which is a mountain range and some hills that are off to the west. And the vast majority of the Wistwood uh, lies to the south and east. Well, so um, what's this this monster they talked about? <laughs> the beast. It doesn't take long and you guys are like hanging out there uh, at the docks or maybe even over here on this side where it's uh, like an E where they could easily have, uh, you know, brought the ship up and then pulled it off again. When they uh, when you help them head off and you guys get all your belongings, this is when um, what's this lady's name? Uh, Karina makes her appearance. Corna? Corna. Yeah, her too. Corna, Cor Corna Tanzan. <laughs> There's two Both of them. them. Ten. All of those people make their make their uh, uh, man. I thought I had made a handout. I think I lost some handouts somewhere, guys. Who who took them? I even remember what I called it. Oh, there who it is. <laughs> who took them? Who took them, guys? I do have a good I... pickpocket. Yep. I have enough roll. All right, there hours. is the mayor yeah, of the out. roost. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh. Easy. <laughs> So uh, she's like, she seems to be looking over the crowd and she's like, what, what is this? You were dropped off by Vornari. She's looking at the mixed crowd. I. He said, you must be Corna Tamsin. That is correct. Who are you? I am broker Bennett. Speaking that stirred. <laughs> and this is my this is my, my faithful party to help accompany me we are en route to where are we going Northgate 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 yes I have that big and big and bold on my sheet here going to Northgate <laughs> <laughs> you, you uh you have some bit of travel left ahead of you what what was it about with that uh, Vornari longship? What what happened? Are you from the storm? No, we were being pursued. And we mm. came this way. I mean, was there a particular reason why we diverted to the roost? Just to get out uh, of it? It sounded like Gunthar was having some problems and he said the boat he wanted to try and lead them off. They dropped you off here and then let him somewhere else because the boat wasn't okay. going to make the trip to Northgate. Gotcha. Mm. I figured it might have been to get like get rid of the tail that we had. That too. Get him off of you guys and then just to keep following them. Hmm. Yeah. Bennett, I think perhaps next time you should choose the boat. Mm. I will not hold that against you. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't the boat. It was the the slime that affected the boat mm. and made it. So it was taking. How on pervasive? Water and can I ask problems. a world question about this, Hobbs? Yeah. Uh, how pervasive is that that cult of the anointed? 
Like, should we be concerned about saying that those fuckers were after us or like for, for fear of their being anointed here or are they sort of a secretive thing that's, that just pops up? They're, and... No, they're not really secretive, but they're uh, mostly just generally located in North Gate. Okay. But, uh, so the kingdom, the Argosan uh, country is controlled by a king and then there's a few city-states and one of these cities is controlled by uh, the Stargazer. And these people are like his immediate underlings. Mm -hmm. So they're really the law, right? But some people don't necessarily feel it like that way because rumors have come that uh, in the past months, the Stargazer has gotten even weirder and weirder um, edicts and people are disappearing from the streets and Hmm. it's a dangerous place. So we're kind of Are on the run sure from the cops as a then? party that we. Is that right? Say that again. Are we on the run from the cops then? Is that everyone effective? talked at once? <laughs> well, the North Gate, the North Gate cops, I guess. Yeah, okay. if you would call them the cops, yeah, in some ways, but they're they don't really have any jurisdiction outside of North Gate other than what perhaps uh, the Stargazer gives them, right? Okay. So, and this outpost is likely under control of. Uh, Outpost is. Yeah, so you would know this, Bennett. The outpost is considered under um, quartermaster control. So presumably under the control of the of the Stargazer, but also the merchants faction of Northgate. Hmm. So it's kind of the cops, but it's also like kind of the bad cops, right, from another town. Okay. A lot of moving parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do the merchants relate to the herders and growers consortium? Are they a different factions? So the, yeah, the herders and growers common is all is Vornari. So the Vornari are these ravers, uh, as far as the rest of the Midlanders are considered are concerned. Except uh, their whole point of of Northgate is to basically just be a staging point for Vernari Reavers to come down into the Argos and Sea and wreak havoc and steal things and bring back and then send back to their homeland, mm-hmm. the island of Vornar. But the her- herders and growers common is Vornari who want to take up roots and create a real you know, life here okay. as farmers and they're learning. And so though that faction underneath the Vernari are trying to create um, trade with Northgate. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. And so as far as the roost goes, uh, what she had, it's a, it's just a small outpost that's on the edge of uh, the silt water. And um, there was a, you know, apparently maybe they, what their trades were, they have some various trades, but most recently they've been known for uh, exploring a ruin. But there isn't a lot of information about that. That's more recent. All right, Sean. So what is Bennett trying to do with the overseer or mayor uh, coroner? So from here, do we have to pick up another ship to get to where we want, or is there? Will you be going overland? Yeah. Okay. It's like, um, I tell her, I, Miss Tanzan, we need to go overland to hit to en route to Northgate, and maybe you could map us out a safe passage, or even possibly have. Oh, individuals that travel that route, maybe a guide of some kind to help us. Well, come, come. I have a, a house. Let us let us speak there. Indeed. She kind of looks around. She leads you off to another house. And she has her people bring food. And uh, let's see here. Very hospitable she, of you. Thank you very much. This is this is she, above and beyond. As you are walking, she goes, I thought I heard whispers of the anointed when uh, the long ship was here. Is that true? I. Well, the anointed are no friends of mine or the roost. 
And as you guys were walking, you can see over, uh, you can hear something flapping overhead. And then this creature uh, lands on an abutment on the south side of the village. Huh. Uh, pay no attention to alert, uh, Elateris, El Elateris? Yeah, Elateris, I guess. Elateris, it is, uh... I would pronounce that Alataris. Alataris? Uh, I don't know how it is. How would you say <laughs> it? <laughs> it's a made of word. I'm not sure there's a right way or a wrong way. <laughs> Depends I, on I, where I, you're from. I <laughs> wrote it. It's not like I read it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So she leads you to this farmhouse. It has like a uh, an awning on the north side there that's about 15 feet long. And then it's, a, you know, wide. It's almost a 25, 30 feet wide. And it's a small house uh, otherwise with two beds. And then there's like a common room there. And uh, you guys are resting. You know, you just had a, you just been on the ship for, you know, three or four days. So it's been a bit. And uh, she starts to talk to you about uh, there could be a path. And it has to deal, have you heard of, uh, I don't know what I called it. And you think I wrote this stuff a long time ago, because I don't remember anything. <laughs> oh, the Sky Road. Sky Road. Sweet. Have I heard of the Sky Road before? You guys can make a general lore check, but you need uh, a great success. Okay. Got it. So it's new enough that almost no one has heard of the Sky Road, but it seems like it's some sort of second age. Zedekar. Zedekar might have heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> Zedekar. <laughs> Check out the big Zedekar. green on Zedekar. Uh, it seems like it was some sort of uh, second age. or So this is like the third age near the end of the third age. So hundreds of years ago, some structure of some second age civilization. Uh, hmm that actually looks like um, they're not sure what its purpose was, but it was found up in some caves near town um, and leads off. And it could be a way to traverse the Wistwood because it's like a road that's above the forest. Okay. Like up in the mountains? Uh, yeah, in the hills. In the hills, yeah. Is it mm. expected that it might save us some time or... Well, the Wistwood is very dangerous. So, so yeah, it could be way more. Okay. Way better. Yeah. So it's she suggests that's dangerous. the best way, because there's definitely uh, scorn are known to be uh, lurking about in the Wistwood near the roost. Mm. And she tries to, uh, she brings in another person and they mention, you know, the path and what you would have to take. And it's uh, about a half day's travel uh, southwest. And then it should be easy, you know, movement there because it's a flat path and it's a, a well-made structure that's lasted for a long time. Okay. It's called the Sky Road. The Sky Road. Hmm. Hmm. You guys are like, what the hell is going is there, on in this game? Is there crazy person named Max that patrols the Sky Road. <laughs> uh, is there a Sky Road in Mad Max? <laughs> no, I'm being facetious, man. Oh, all right. So uh, are you guys like hurt to get back or are you going to take your rest here? Um, what's the plan? Is there anything anyone wants to do? In Can the I roost? ask what, what sort of the time difference? Like if we take the Sky Road, how long do we expect it to take us to get to Northgate then? You think it would cut, you think it would cut, you know, uh, a lo long time, like literal days off if it d works the way she explains it. Okay. And if we avoid this scorn, scorn are kind of like the Midlands version of like orcs or whatnot, right? Yeah. They're, they're just like so cannibalistic, uh, nasties that, uh, okay. eat nearly anything and everything. Big and strong. Like, uh, not like ogre, but bigger than and stronger than uh, men. Yeah. Yeah. So how how far are we? So progress wise, Hobbs, do we are we ahead of schedule or are we behind schedule? 
Are we right on well, schedule? You're going to be behind schedule now because it's going to take longer to move through land than it would to go on what you know be on the water for sure sure okay and schedule isn't necessarily hugely important although if you are being you know chased by principal morris uh a confrontation isn't something that would be great oh look i have a handout it's the roost doesn't it look idyllic 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 how do you say that idyllic oh it depends on where you're from and a great big thank you to lauren uh for their donation uh to the hero save villages campaign too thank you very much oh we are saying it when it happens i didn't know she i guess oh, no i just happened to buttons, notice so you're the one who's gonna have to tell us <laughs> i just happened to notice and there was a lull so i get an email notification when All the right, donation's so... made. perfect <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, is there anything else you guys wanted to ask or do uh, in this in this town? Tamsin's Roost? Yeah. The Roost. Uh, are we, how much food do we think it's going to take? How many days travel is it? Do we think that it's going to be from here to Northgate? Well, let's look. I only have like five days worth of food on me. Nope. It's not like I go to Northgate every day. This is sweet. Oh. So how? F hmm. Oh man, we've got a long way to go. This is awesome. <laughs> We're gonna run into scorn. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you got a good 40 miles, so it should easily, you would guess, you know, a week to 10 days probably, uh, maybe more. But if there is some way that this thing could, because that you can only go, probably go travel four miles through the woods, four or five miles a day. But if this road somehow makes it so you don't have to travel through the woods themselves, you might be able to, you know, road-wise, you might be able to do 10, 12 miles a day. So you could cut that in half, I need depending on how long the road is or what it is. No, they don't have any horses here. Can buy some food? Oh. <laughs> and we borrow the griffin and take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like it's a tamed griffin or anything like that. Our, She's like, oh, oh no. That very difficultly uh, pronounced name, Alistaris, is not uh, something that we ride. Uh, but beware. Uh, yeah. Don't attack any villagers or try not to have any physical altercations or... It could certainly mean trouble. Very okay. protective is uh, is Alistris. All right. Then I, I'll buy a little bit more food and water and a replacement axe if they have one. Yeah, you can get all yep. that stuff. Yep, I'll get some more food too. I've got I think I've got four days of rations, so I'll get I'll get ten days total worth. I've got fifty one okay. GP, so I'll spend a couple of GP. All right, perfect. So food is one gold piece for a week here, according to Steve. So I spend three GP. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I believe him. <laughs> it's Steve. I'm just making it up. Or, or is Steve just trying to? Is Steve just trying to? Because uh, he only had one gold piece. He's like, I still wanted my food, so I'm just gonna say it costs this much and see if we can get through and get by with it. I have 51 GP. I'm rich. My guy's rich. Sort of. Rich mofo. I, I can almost rich. hear in his voice. I'm rich mofo. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let's look it up. Oh, we'll, we'll pull out this awesome book. So it's going to be a common resource here. It's available. Uh, 1D3 gold pieces is what it says. So... Steve, why don't you roll a D3 and we'll see if you got a 33% chance to make it one gold piece. Okay. Looks like it's two gold pieces. Oof. Oh, my oh. name's now Tolaf. It's Tolaf. I was making Steve roll at this time. Oh, how did you do uh -oh. that? You changed... <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I've changed my name. You changed your name at the bottom, I think. I don't know how. There's a thing that says as, and then you can roll as different people. All right, well, 
three gold while I figure out how to change my name back. All right. So yeah, if you want to spend a week, it's three gold. Sorry. All right. So as you guys are, you get your stuff and you come back and uh, um, the mayor, hey, Cleo, Corona, she, um, it wants to hear, you know, what's going on and what's, what's happening and any news because they don't often get visitors. I give her the inform. I give her updates that I think might be pertinent to her. Yeah. Does anybody else talk to her? So this is going to take some time and, you know, you feel like maybe uh, you guys just going to stay here uh, overnight or. What time of day is it now? It's, it's early to mid evening. That I think we should be settle in for the evening and maybe head out at dawn. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Yeah. Thorson. Uh, My character looks at Bennett like what? No. <laughs> um, not, not a big help. Is that a car? I would say you. So here's what I'm going to think. Is uh, is there like a tavern or a common, uh, you know, kind of place where the, the locals will hang out or the sailors will hang out? Because thinking... always beats me to the punch because I was just going to ask for <laughs> a beer. Yeah, because I got to, What I'm thinking so... is just to... I, I, based on the amount of little successes I've had on that general knowledge stuff... I'm thinking that what uh, Zedekar's usual MO is, is once um, Bennett settled in, is he goes over to the bar and then just buys drinks and kind of gets the lay of the land. So I'd like to try and do the same thing here, see if we've heard any troubles on the Skyway, get a sense of what we're going to expect up there. Okay. So uh, it seems like the uh, the mayor, Corona, wants to hang out with you guys for a while. So is who's staying uh, at the house and who's going to the tavern? Is anyone else going with Zedekar? Does Zedekar want anyone to go with him, I guess? I'm fine with anyone doing whatever. If this lady wants to hang out with old man, she's welcome to do that. I'll stay, but... <laughs> well, guessing... she, wants to hear, she wants to hear all the news because she hasn't been around. So and she wants to keep her to you guys to herself. She's a possible. bit of a chatty Kathy too, like right? That. Yep. Yeah, so why don't we... Do, let's, can, can we talk to her and kind of get the like the like all the... Gossip and yeah, whatnot, for sure. Yeah, yeah. In addition yeah, she to being has some a beer uh, brought in for you guys. Yep. Now done. we're talking. In addition to being an ahead, artificer, he's also a uh, remorseless gossip. So, mm. <gasps> critical failure. Oh no! Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 so, uh, is there anything specific you guys wanted to know? So she's like, it seems like the guide. Uh, was missing, but she does her best to. Yeah, that's what uh -oh. I was trying to tell. You found it, Steve, or no? At the bottom right of the where the chat box is on the very bottom, like if you're looking at the Twitch stream, oh, no, yeah. you not got it, though. Got it, got it, got it. it says <laughs> as. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You then go. you can change it. Awesome. All right. So as you guys are talking, I have put, is this where you guys want to be? Or do you want to be all in the same room? I have Borgar hanging outside along with Wick under the over the awning. But you guys can be wherever you want. Hey, can I use so my reroll on a critical failure? Yeah. Well, do you have the skill? you have the skill? I do. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Uh, okay, let's do that to avoid upsetting this lady. Come on, roll 20. Give me another 20. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> You're awesome. So it, it seems like she's not necessarily offended with anyone else, but uh, with Zedekar, she certainly uh, seems uninterested in sharing any of his questions. So you seem like quite stupid, but perhaps you could answer some questions about your shitty, shitty town. <laughs> Zedekar's drunk it sounds like alright so I'm assuming Zedekar is like outside and he could still wander to the bar if he wants to <laughs> no way I'm gonna get in a fight with those rolls <laughs> alright so <laughs> this is great alright so she kind of kicked Zedekar out is Borgar coming in or is she gonna stay outside Borga is not really one for talking or for uh, 
learning the lay of the land ahead of the time. He's more of a kind of charge in and deal with whatever happens kind of guy. So he's just going to hang out outside. And... Where the heck is Bennett? I'm going to be with There's... Karna. I... That's where I'm going to be. There's no Bennett token missing yeah. in action. Uh oh. Uh oh. But I, w I will probably be the default delegate to Karna. Orna? Her name's changed like five times. Karna. I have C A R N A. Karna. <laughs> it's actually all oh. hyphenated. C O R I N A. <laughs> Corina? Corina? Yeah. Corina or Corina. Yeah. Cornetto. I s how do you say your name? Uh, is Corina <laughs> or Corina? Oh, it changes uh, at the whim of the GM, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, despite that fool, what what would you like to be called? <laughs> Orna. Orna. Bennett's on the roof. What's, apologize, sir. What are you doing up there? I, I think I, I think I've been. That's what happened. The wrong name all this time. I apologize. No problem. That's what happened. I uh, I had put them somewhere else. Nordak, you're there. There we go. All right. All right. So the night uh, goes on. And you guys can hear, so it sounds like that the tavern or the bar must be on like this large building to the north. And Zedekar and Borgar and Wick are out there as the others are talking inside. Occasionally you guys go in to get your drinks. Uh, Wick uh, is trying to tell a story to you guys about the last time she got in a fight and was, uh, or they got in a fight and, you know, she thought a shovel, take care of it. I knew my trusted shovel would do it, she says. Uh, they say, sorry. All of a sudden, though, you guys see some ruckus kind of spill out of the inn or the tavern or whatever it is. Can you and they're like, the ruckus? Well, you guys can't hear it. You're in the in the house, but the guys outside can hear it. The ruckus uh, seems to be like someone seems to be rabble rousing. And you specifically, why don't you guys make a uh, detection check, Zedekar and Borgar? Oh, yep. definitely. Success. You're not very good talkers, but you can, you know, you can listen in on the best of them. And they're like, yeah, let's get those Venari. Let's get those Northerners before they get us. Let's do it. And then you can see like some guys come around. Wait, they're coming to get us? It sounds like it. They seem <laughs> Borgar, fired up. talking to you. I'm not Vornari, am I? And you can hear, no. Okay. No, neither is Bennett. Nordak and Thorsenar and Borgar are. But that whole long ship was full of Vornari as well. Mm. Um, and not only that, but you can actually, it seems like you can hear the same sort of thing, but distantly coming from different parts of town. The same hostility? Is that rumblings? Yeah, they think so. Um, so I'm going to lean back and kind of slam my fist on the door two or three times, get the attention of the guys inside, then maybe uh, shift my, my shield from my back to kind of laying across my lap where it's easy to get at. Hear from inside. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I, I hope Politicus isn't alarmed. They seem unhappy. Hmm. <laughs> Strange. I stand Our by my statement from before. <laughs> <laughs> Something that odd about these Dorsal villagers. Out the door. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, no. At the sound of our ghost and Thorson's out the door. You can move your token where you want to. Oh, you run out there to see what's happening? Yeah. So it sounds like someone. Fenrir. Jesus. Who's Vagari out of the group? Thorson and who? Borgar? Nordak Borgar, Nordak. Thorson, and uh, Nordak are all Vornari. Oh, great. Vornari. Oh, Nordak, Nordak goes outside. So has a look at what the hell's going on. So it seems like uh, some mob is headed your way. Get my heavy crossbow. Maybe, <laughs> maybe multiple mobs. Mm-mm. Dorson. <laughs> no, no. Dorson's going to look at them. They have torches and rakes. 
<laughs> and starts laughing at him. Like, that's the best you've got, Argosans? <laughs> Zedeka, I believe some of our colleagues may be in danger. <laughs> I think that some of our colleagues may be a danger. Hmm, indeed. <laughs> So you guys are outside, and she's like, "This seems this seems unusual." Uh, you guys can make another uh, detection check at disadvantage. Let's see who's really good. So let's see here. Everybody. Yeah, you guys are all out there. So is there an option on the drop down to go to dis? Oh, here we go. I'm a dummy. Yep. Yeah. How about look first, Madison? What? <laughs> all right. So. Nice. So it looks like uh, Thorson and uh, Zedekar realize it seems like this guy back here seems to be the leader of some sort and specifically seems to be getting these people uh, riled up because right now they're just kind of milling about looking over at you, but you can hear like shouts coming from other parts of town where other people seem to be uh, have getting something going. Mm -hmm. Zedekar, you feel like it certainly has to be some sort of anointed plot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll whisper back to Bennett. I sense the hand of the anointed in this. Ah, uh, dirty bastards. Do we talk? Can you... Or do we bleed them? It depends on their numbers. Sounds like it's coming from everywhere. I'll uh, point out the troublemaker in the back there, and I'll gesture with my musket. There! That one seems to be the leader. Dorson <laughs> scoffs. Ha! Our gosens. Corna. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know and recognize <laughs> that one way back there? It's a whole new name. Oh, it's not. Corina. 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 <laughs> Corina. I'm sorry. My accent is very, it's so very thick. You guys, I apologize. <laughs> you guys can spot some torches moving on the side of town and even down here this way as well. Uh-oh. Did she, is she out there? Did I, could I point him, point him out to her? She kind of looks over. I can't tell. I, I don't think so. Dorson's she... just going to bang Borgar. Say, bam. Like, hit elbow him. What, what are we going to do? <laughs> I think we... Bang Borgar? What the heck? <laughs> I said elbow him. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, let's check the transcript on that. Borgar, <laughs> Borgar stands up. Puts his shield on his arm, pulls out his big battle axe, starts walking towards these guys right here. Bennett, Walk they up. seem to be putting logs on the fire. Spears are so Thorson says, are So be it. You said fire. Beautiful. He drops his gloves, and Thorson produces a longbow, GM Hobbs. Sorry, what were you saying, Sean? I was just saying, I think our friends aren't fearful. <laughs> Nordax marching up with Borgar. I've got my heavy crossbow out, trained on uh, the lady guy. So okay. I'll, I'll look down at my at my musket and look at Bennett and kind of shrug like, should I take the shot? <laughs> <sighs> so I'm going to line up a shot. What does Bennett under... say? Yeah. I appear to be outnumbered. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> all the way around. All right, so you're lining up a shot, but I get the impression there is more people spilling out of the tavern up there. Oh, so that is yeah, like a yeah. mob up there. Uh, these guys are more singular, like the first ones that seem to come out. Uh, Borgard, you want to try and intimidate these guys? Nordak, you could help him if you wanted. So I think that gives you advantage, Borgar. Maybe you should make an intimidation check uh, uh, at advantage. It's All right. Be a, a pose role. Uh, I do not have intimidation spy. as a skill. So what stat do you want? Charisma. Charisma? Uh, yeah, charisma. You could. Yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah. I'll roll roll charisma with advantage from Nordak. Oh yes. Hell yeah. You made it by six. <laughs> oh shit. So he's like, oh they come! They come to scare you with their weapons! They come to take your wives and your children and your children's booty and your wives' booty as well. They're all like fired up. They're shaking their, their pitchforks and the Vorari, the Vorari, get out of our town. And she's, oh dear. When you mention the Griffin, it's like, oh dear, surely. At that point, you hear this loud, loud screech. Grah! Echo across the village. Are you gonna fire oh. Zedekar? Crap, the Griffin. Heck yeah. Uh, one second here. Oh, I, I, I guess first of all, I did get the nod from uh, Bennett. I won't shoot unless Bennett gives me the the okay. Uh, oh, great. So my <laughs> the name for my rifle is the Voice. So are we speaking with the voice or with your voice? Hmm. We may not have an option. It seems as though the mob is growing and coming closer. And I've, our colleagues seem to be engaging. I'll see if we, we can bring them to their senses. And let's see here. Corinna, I fear for your life. You must send for your griffin. So I had AC 11. Oh, sorry. I was reading what uh, Steve was saying. We his he should have been able to use his leadership skill or something if he wanted. That's okay. To. I rolled uh, pretty well anyway. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He just I just rolled better. Sorry. Yeah. Or I just GM feed I you to death. <laughs> All right. Um, what are you laughing about? What? The GM fired. Okay. So <laughs> all right. I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm walking up and they're they're shouting about how the Vornari are going to take all their stuff and I shout out, "Yeah, I am going to take your women and all your booty mm -hmm. and I'm not really interested in the children, so I'll let them go into the mistwood and get eaten by scorn, but everyone else." <laughs> so, uh then you hear the voice shouts out with a deafening <laughs> Everyone kind of ducks down and uh it seems like some some areas, you know, some robes is kind of ripped off the guy, and you can see beneath. Uh, it looks like he has like chainmail glinting in the night. The rabble rouser that you shot at, mm. so it doesn't hit him. Should I? Do I need to read this? No, it doesn't. Yeah, so it doesn't get bonus against armor or anything like that. But nice shot, anyway. It would have okay. probably. You're sure that it would have hit anyone else, but this guy was prepared. No, it's good to he's know he's, he's not. Or... This isn't some just uh, yeah. schmo. It's someone who's trying to conceal his true purpose. That's what yes, I meant exactly. to do. So, all right. At that point, go ahead. Would you, you want to do something, Brian? Thorson's just shocked at the noise that comes from him, and it stops his attention for a second. So I'm not going to get a shot off. All right. You heard him. Kill them. For the roost. And this this mob. <laughs> uh, why don't we roll initiative? Give you guys another chance. Heck here. yeah. Something if you wanted. Nordak's like, maybe we should leave. <laughs> yeah, run from the griffin for sure. See. Everyone's got great successes, though, so that's good. So I'm just going to uh, replace this with this guy. Hey, Hobbs, do we see the mob up in the northwest? Yeah, you guys saw them moving. Okay. Nordak also mentioned that they were there as well. Great. Hmm. And you can see shadows and torches approaching from the southwest as well. I see those. Zedekar, we may be outnumbered. We may need to <laughs> slap these sides, these guys upside the head and, and leave. Okay. And after the booming 
screech of the voice. Now you can hear that animalistic screech again. <laughs> Echoing over the village. Ooh. So, um, I think it's the lowest. Great success. Looks like Thorson got a two. Hmm. What are you going to do, Brian? Oh, I'm going to shoot the big mouth. What did Zedekar ever do to you? Come on. The other big mouth. <laughs> the one that's leading the pack against me. Okay. Okay. And I'll scream. The mighty battle cry. Nice. Which is? For the Venari! <laughs> and I he mean does it. Yell that. Oh, God. What'd you get? Oh, 17. 17. All right, that definitely hits. I'll mark off an arrow. Um, I'm just going to hold on to Finner's attack for a second, if that's okay. Yep. Thank you, GM Hobbs. All right. So the arrow hits this. This guy is obviously a trained soldier of some sort. And if he is one of the anointed soldiers, uh, rumor has it that they too are empowered by imbibing the stargazer's blood. I was looking for a fight song. I don't usually play music, but I've been trying to do it. What's a, what's a good fight song? Coliseum? No. Clash of Kings? What's the one you always say? Axe? That's probably not by tabletop audio, is it? You like actually put it. No, in. I use uh, Kevin uh, McLeod's stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, who is? Oh, we still have other actions, right? Yeah. Who's up? Fourth. Is there a back door to this place? No, but you could run out. If you want to, there's windows. You can see there's windows. There's just shuttered windows. Let's see here. So it looks like there's nothing in the. Uh, you want to try and get up southeast of the camp, Bennett? Yeah, you don't spot any torches moving around over there. All right, well, Bennett is deciding. Borgart is going to walk up and try to whack one of them with his axe. Right. I forgot. What is it? 183, I think. He's buying us some time. We should flee. Borgar, a fighting retreat. That voice sounds like some voice. I can't place it, though. <laughs> it's a poor man's version of Decker Kane. 183. <laughs> I think it's my I think it's my grandpa actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, why don't you visit? <laughs> <laughs> the grandpa voice, I love it. <laughs> I got the guilt trip now from grandpa. <laughs> Take your stars to have a grandfather alive still to uh mm. guilt trip you. I know, right? I don't. I don't. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Then you shouldn't thank your lucky stars. <laughs> you should be thank your lucky stars for him reminding you of your <laughs> past <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> That's it. Um, um, so, yeah. Uh, All right. So I was just looking up how the mob swarm works. All right. Nice. Good rules, Steve. Good rules. Were you wanting to say something, Kevin? Oh, no, I, I, uh, if we're going to start moving, I can reload and, uh, move still. So, uh, I can reload the voice and move with Bennett wherever Bennett wants to move. Oh, and I should take care of this. How much you hit AC? Their armor class is 10. How much did you do? Mm, I haven't, uh, swung yet because I was waiting oh. for you to look up stuff. Sorry. All right, I will swing now. And I only hit an AC of eight, so I don't even hit anybody. <laughs> yeah, they kind of scatter away. Oh, Vernari, watch it. 
Run for your lives! Nordak, what are you doing? Are you up, Nordak? Oh, Did Thorson go? Sorry, oh, go ahead, Nordak. I already asked you to. I guess you were the last one, but... I'll just shoot at the... the I'll try and shoot the guy. If I can still see the, that, the rebel rouser. Otherwise, I'll just shoot into the mob. And yell out something like, Go back to your homes! <laughs> Go back to your homes. <laughs> so, uh, were you trying to... So, you got... We'll say you got a one in three chance of being able to single this the guy out. So, roll a d6 or roll d3. Ah, uh, yep, okay. One means that you did attack him, which is not going to hit anyway. But it uh, does fire into the mob... And someone is like, oh, you can hear it thunk, funks into someone's body as uh, one of the Ish. one of the many parts of the mob kind of just oh, hmm. falls back, blood oh, splurting out of the sunken crossbow bolt in his midriff. All right, um, Thorson, did you go? Since you did. rolled a seventeen to hit someone, who did you fire at? Uh, the what's his face with the. Character. All right, so you have to roll a d6 to see if you can pick him out of the mob. Oh. Uh, so you one out of one in three chance. So roll d3. If <laughs> I use my sharp I mean, shooter skill, first time, but... can I pick him out of the mob? Sure. Yes. I will use a sharp shooter skill if I can hit it. I need to make a yep. per, uh, I... per roll think maybe i just press this one see if that works that do nice that's not it rolling damage perception check bam uh, roll 20 all right yeah so you did you easily picked him out of the mob and the arrow so he's taking into 10 I'm sorry jim hobbs i didn't mean to cut you off tell him tell no everyone problem. how how i put one into his guts for 10 points of damage yeah, you did. Good work. He was like ready to <laughs> shout out another cry. Kill the voter. Ah, <laughs> oh, my liver. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Borgar went. Thorson went. Bennett, have you gone? I have not gone. All right. What are you gonna do, buddy? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Set a car. Yes. We need to get out of here. Agreed. I move around the corner of the. Uh, establishment around this bush so i think i can move probably six one two three four five i'll get to it. second bennett starts to try to move away Bennett starts growling at him like and shaking his head like uh uh <laughs> the dog seems poorly trained <laughs> dog by whom so are are you running or what? I think you can double move if you want. No, so just a single move. move. Ten. I don't, don't want to like ditch everybody. I'm trying to sway people back and this way. We need to get out of here. All right. Oh, okay. Um, uh, is that everyone then? Is that a car went on? Are you you're reloading this round? Yep, I'm moving over uh, next to Bennett, and I'm you know doing the reloading of thing, whatever. <laughs> Those, that's what she those kinda, motions are. What's she kind of comes out next to uh, Wick and Thorson? She's like, "No, these are my villagers. Surely this is anointed plot. Don't kill them." <laughs> uh, too late. Huh? People are falling back from Borgar. Uh, they're getting ready just to swarm over top of Borgar, though. You know, there's probably ten or twelve people in this mass of uh, villagers uh -oh. here. Not, say, not saying that he couldn't uh, take them on. I'm just saying that it it seems un, unwieldy. Hmm. All right, let me see here. What am I trying to do? Four, I have so a rules question, Hobbs. Four as... Yeah, go ahead. Um, my, what do you call it? Thunder Fist uh, only hits, or Thunder Gauntlet, uh, only hits one target. What would that do to a crowd? Would that Nothing. be... It sounded like you had to pinpoint the person. Yeah. Uh... Or should I just read it? That we should all I can, do. Here, I can, I can look it up. take a look. Give me a second. I can click on it for you. Sec. I got. You just did it all. There it is. There's the rules for it. 
Because I'm wondering if I can hit the front guy if it if it does throw someone back, whether it'll be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, Indiana Jones style through the crowd knocking people down. Uh, I think if you want to do a mass of them, I think you could do it with a uh, major exploit. You okay. can shift it into a major exploit, but uh, so I don't hmm. think you normally it automatically works usually. Oh no, I guess it's just a con save. Yep. Um, yeah, we figure out a way. Like, so if you made an attack roll and did damage, then uh, we would put it into a major exploit, and then you could topple a bunch of them to maybe free that situation. Sound okay. good? Let's see how things go with Borgar first. All right. <laughs> so yeah, Borgar, you easily fend them off because you have a sixteen or something, right? I have a nineteen. Oh, it is a nineteen. Nice. What a surprise! Borgar wants to have a super high AC. <laughs> That's well, unusual for heavy Borgar. armor yeah. plus my shield with my protector bonus plus a good dexterity. So I'm really hard to hit. You guys can hear a similar person seems to be. It's not exactly the same person, but it's definitely some kind of coordinated effort, likely by the anointed of Rab getting these guys all fired up. Hmm. Initiative. Okay. Um. Wah, wah. Boom. He's roll 20. So, I mean, you guys do have, if you really wanted to flee, you have the option of using, like, the party retreat. Exploit if you want to, also in this game. If you just said, hey, we just want to get out of here, you could definitely try to use that if you want to. What do you or, think? Or yeah, I mean, you can them? get this set up with the uh, the thunder gauntlet if you'd like as well. Does, Your first set of car. Oh, Steve, did you have something you want to say? Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Um, does Nordak know? Has he picked up that this is something that's been orchestrated by um, the anointed, or is it sort of clear up to, to you? Others, I'll leave it to you. Other people have mentioned it. Yeah, so other party okay, members right. have mentioned it, but right, right. you can decide if you heard it or not. But okay. you also do hear that screech gets closer. Okay. Now it's time to go. As something is flying towards you all. Oh, no. Yeah, right. Well, Nordak, Nordak yells out something like, ugh. This is a trap. We must flee. Something like that. Fang <laughs> dragon. <laughs> yes, Fang dragon. <laughs> hey, how many people are watching us uh, on on your stream? Uh, eighteen. You any, over there are talking. Oh, eighteen guys yeah. over there are watching us on YouTube. Heck yeah. Nice. Are they saying anything? I I forgot. I'm usually chatting no, in the chat. Said, I don't ever say anything. The uh, everyone says howdy. You got Antiochus says howdy. Iwawa says howdy. William says howdy. Hey, little fantasy gaming and a big smile. Uh, William is in. <laughs> Someone appreciates my <laughs> faux grandfather for you, Sean. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, and Dave's in there too. Dave says howdy, uh, Mr. Hobbs and friends. New guy, Dave? Yeah, Dave. Dave Fortier. Oh, nice. Our resident armor smith. Nice. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So after that quick interlude, what is Zedekar going to do? Um, Zedekar uh, curses. Do we have like a native tongue that like Bennett and I speak apart from like Midlander or Vornari or? Uh, so you guys would speak Midlander and Vornari wouldn't necessarily speak it. But these the mob guys probably would speak it as well because they're likely mostly Argosan as well. Okay. So I think, um, hmm. I'll say something to the effect of, like, uh, the anointed are certainly pernicious foes. And I'll make my oh. shot at the same guy again. I finished reloading my uh, gunny gun. So let's see how the voice speaks here. Come on. Big money. Boom. AC 10. Nope. Shot a farmer. <laughs> Whoops. You did indeed shoot a farmer. Another one. Blood splurts out of the shot cool. as he falls back. You guys can all hear a screech as the voice. 
So I, I turned you know, to, uh, as a minor action, I turned to Bennett and say, I don't think we'll be invited back. <laughs> All right. Here. Thanks, here. Will. Will's hosting us over there. Awesome. At Greyhawk Adventures now, too. Oh, awesome. They're a well. cunning group. If we don't get out of here, everybody's going to want our heads on pikes. <laughs> hey, Matt Javits in here, too. Matt, howdy. Matt's a host Don of the uh, Spyhander and soon to be the host of the uh, Free Lagan uh, Twitch channel. So congrats to Matt for that. I don't even know what that is. Uh, is that Free a League. Term? Free League. The guys who make uh, oh, 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 Forbidden yeah. Lands, Aliens. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if we could add any more craziness to this particular scene at, at the small Thameson's Roost here. All right, so um, that was uh, Zedekar. It looks like almost anybody else can go but Broker Bennett. Bennett is stunned as he sees a massive griffin swooping towards uh, the center of town here. So I'm thinking... These guys are like farmers, right? They're not battle-hardened warriors. I could probably, like, you know, chop one of their heads off and roar at them and make another intimidation check to see if I can make some space for myself to get away. That seems like sure. a good major exploit that I could do. Yeah. Yeah. So let me make my melee attack. <laughs> oh, there. Never mind. <laughs> Borg got his arm turning into the neck and berserker foam me. coming out of his mouth and whoosh, whipping him. You, you could still just be whipping your axe around, and they're going to be backing off and trying to stab you with pitchforks and whack you with, you know, their tined rakes. Uh, all right, that was Borgar. Nordak, what are you going to do? I, I, I will try and. Can I run over, grab Borgar by the back of his chainmail, and start dragging him away, saying, We must go! This is a trap! Uh, Borgar, are you going to let him pull you? Uh, yeah, if I, I, because I was trying to make space for myself to retreat. So if he starts pulling on me, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back with Nordak, definitely. Mm. All right. So as you go back, they're going to get an attack on you. Unless you are going to use the, actually use the party retreat mechanic, they're probably going to get an attack on you. I, I'm not I'm worried happy, about them getting I'm an happy attack to do the on retreat. me. I'm not worried. <laughs> Nordak wants to do the retreat. Is everyone re willing to try the party retreat mechanic here yeah. to get out of here? Yep. Steve wants to do it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he must think it, that's the way to do everything is the party retreat. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I tried here. like uh, 20 minutes ago. I was unsuccessful in getting people to <laughs> retreat. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. That was before there was three mobs and a massive flying griffin. That's right. Yeah, the he just got invited game changer. Steve because he wrote the book. So when he gets on here and says retreat, then everybody <laughs> else is good. <laughs> so how does this retreat work mechanically? I'm looking for it right now, my man. Okay. I Probably doesn't. Really find it, yet. it does. We've done it a few times. Steve, Party you want to just on 68 and 69? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I almost got it. My there. memory is we just explain how we how we want to run off. I'll run. <laughs> but uh, oh, we're supposed to do it at the start of a round, actually. And then, yeah, we just we just give a bit of explanation. So we just, you know, we we have to be able to explain how we would nick off. So we okay. always bolt. Um, then we make a group luck check. Oh, so as long as more than half of us make the check, we escape. Unless Hobbs wants to throw modifiers in or turn it into a chase or whatever. Turn around if the whole party wishes to flee from a battle. They must first explain to the GM how escape might be possible. If the GM agrees, a good luck check is required. Possibility, uh, possibly with strength or con checks, a carry away and cautious of allies. Like he said, everything seems if successful. The whole party reduces their luck by one. The adventurers manage to break away from the battle with the incapacity allies over their shoulders or otherwise in tow is explained by the players. Depending on the circumstances, fleeing may lead to a uh, chase. If unsuccessful, the GM might permit any individual successful adventures to leave, but the remaining PCs behind put a party or any remaining PCs may attempt to flee again next round if desired. <laughs> Question. Yes, sir. If we start to run, take our move action, I get another shot off at the uh, anointed one on our way yeah, out. That... A nice yep. little parting gift from the Venari. 
Well, let's finish this round out because you're not going to be able to do the party retreat until the next round anyway. Uh, oh, but hell Nordak yeah. has gathered up with Borgar here, uh, which is fine. And uh, Bennett is last. Uh, has everyone else got an action this round? You can reload your bow, Nordak, if you want as well, right? Because you haven't done that yet. Thorson, I think you went first. I haven't gone yet. Or no, you haven't gone this round? All right. What do you want to do this round? Attack the anointed one. Let's do it. Let's scream for the Venari. <laughs> and since I don't really like Argosans, I'm going to try to use my sharpshooter too. All right, do it. Here we go. Come on, oh, roll 20. Great success. That's another 10. Nice. So this guy has two arrows in him. He's like, <laughs> struggling and trying to hide behind the others. But he isn't dead. <laughs> so these uh, anointed soldiers are badasses, apparently. Not impressed. This guy lands. Oh. These guys are going to attack. Mark off another they miss the... Borgar, fends them off with their shield. These guys are running forward. Uh oh. These guys are coming up. So uh, the mayor's right. doing I think that's nothing. That's all anyone right? can attack this round. Is the mayor doing I nothing, or is she just like trying to call the griffin down? She's like, oh, yelling, oh no, yeah. She's like fluttering her hands about. <laughs> she actually probably disappears in the house at this point. I think Mark CMG Clover is equating Borgar to Boromir for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, hey, Mark. Welcome to the channel, buddy. Glad to have you, brother. This wasn't someone should toss the... Uh... Let's finish this scene out, and then we'll take our break, and then we'll explain what the uh, charity is and all that. Sure. All right, so it is Bennett's turn this round. What are you going to do, Bennett? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run, run. I'm going to tell everybody, Retreat! Retreat! So we're going to make the retreat action next round. We're going to do that party retreat, but you can do something this round if you want to, other than yell. Well, I'm going to move because I don't know how I'm going to pan out the next round, so I'll move. Fenrir okay. is just barking at Bennett. You don't like that guy at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's more of like a trade delegate than he is, you know, like a big powerful magic user. So. <laughs> I'm <serious>. fragile. <laughs> Watch me calculate interest All rates. Right. <laughs> force All right. does not. I do not handle force blunt trauma very well. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's make our luck checks for this flea. Okay. And you guys can use whatever you want. So like maybe Bennett is using his intelligence to help him flee, or someone else is using their decks. You can use whatever modifier you want to get out of this situation with the party retreat. Mm. <laughs> so everyone makes a luck check with their choice of uh oh with their choice and if you fail that means you haven't gotten away oh, Jesus. everyone gets away except we have we haven't seen steve yet jim hobbs i have an important question yes uh, uh i burnt through my guy's luck last adventure it's pretty low oh, it's, it's everyone started low. full no everyone started at full Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I let everyone start at full for this special session because I expected it to be uh, rather oh. dangerous and possibly. Yeah, my luck goes yeah, down so by one, right? Every, everyone loses a luck point except for uh, Sean, but he'll lose it as soon as he does. But Sean, so everyone else is like taken off and Zedekar is trying to help you. The things are looming closer, like the griffin screeches and, and some of the mob... Uh, you know, fends away from them. They're looming ever closer, but they can't get to attack you. Like a couple people throw rocks. Hey, leave him alone. Wicked oh, no. <laughs> knock the rocks down with her shovel. The shovel ought to do it. All right, so Bennett is going to get hit by a rock unless someone wants to try and stop that from Ooh, happening. I will. Fenrir don't. One person can. One person can choose. That is the only thing I'm being paid for. So, yeah, I'm being paid for this. So, yes. 
Um, what are you going to do? How are you going to protect him? I am uh, for for an old guy. I am su- surprisingly spry, uh, and I'm quite clever as well too. Um, I think what I'd like to rely on is sort of uh, if I can see when they're like going down and they're and they're grabbing things and they're going to pick up to, to try and judge the when this crowd's going to get violent. As soon as I see that they're getting violent, I sort of push him down, like you know bodyguard style and be like get down yeah. and try and keep him out of the way How's all right that so make a dex check um okay all right success so now you need to make a uh luck strength check luck strength check so, well i mean I, it could be dex or strength up to you how about you're kind of pushing him you're using your yeah, sure. power to move him you know go nat one right, look you at that it. So, so yeah, he takes no damage. You easily, Zedekar, <laughs> just bend it out of the way from the incoming rocks. And uh, it's the next round. Bennett, you need to make... Uh, so you lose another point of luck, though, Zedekar. Yep, yep, mark down. All right, so you mean, need to make a luck check of your choice, Bennett. God. So if you don't get out, though, there could be some serious trouble, and I'm assuming you're pulling everyone else out of the retreat. I'm going to try Dex this time. I don't know why I tried Inf last time. There we go. Yay! Nice. You made it. So now you 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 lose a luck point. So you guys flee the village, and it seems like there is some trouble with uh, the the Griffin and the villagers. You can hear them fighting, and maybe just maybe on the horizon, out in the sea, you can see the anointed ship coming up towards the shore. Oof. All right. So why don't we uh, take a break? Uh, if anyone wants to stagger their break and like, if you want to talk about the ch- charity, you know, very briefly, or if someone wants to put it in the chat, what we're doing here, we've got more viewers here. And uh, I'm assuming we're picking up some viewers from the uh, Will's channel and uh, yeah, sure. I'll, just, I'll do so a quick uh, so the, break. Uh, the session uh, today was made uh, possible uh, by a very, very generous donation from our player, Brian here. Uh, who, which, who made a, a donation to uh, the Heroes Save Villages uh, charity campaign that we run on uh, the Dungeon Musings uh, YouTube channel. That benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really awesome organization active in over 130 countries that benefits over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, building these wonderful villages that provide uh, a stable and supportive living environment for kids. So guess kids who otherwise wouldn't have a chance to be kids act as kids so once again a big big thank you to brian uh for that uh and from now until uh september 1st uh we have our annual charity raffle going on as well too uh you can find links in the description of the video um, on the dungeon musings youtube channel in the chat on the hobbs and friends uh gamerhood or not hobbs friends the mr hobbs's gamerhood twitch um, the, uh, the, for every $25 Canadian that you donate, uh, you get one chance to win the grand prize, uh, which is a copy of Beetle and Grimm's amazing gold edition Eberron Rising from the Last War box set. It's a super cool box set product. It reminds me a lot of the old second edition ones where you got the whole setting in there. There's a bunch of extra books. There's some cool handouts. There's a DM screen. There's maps. There's dragon shards. There's all sorts of amazing crap in there. Uh, and uh, uh, is very generously donate, donated by our friends at Beetle and Grimm. Um, if you don't win that, though, you still have tons of other amazing prizes, including a hard copy of the very game that we're playing right now, uh, Low Fantasy Gaming, uh, very generously uh, donated by Steve, the uh, author of Low Fantasy Gaming. Uh, we also have two copies of the Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea Core Rulebook from... Uh, uh, written by Jeff Tulanian. Uh There's a copy of uh, Brian Anand's Any Award winning The Monsters Know What They're Doing. Uh, there are a uh, Skittermander dice bag. There is a Chainmail dice bag that one of our uh, regular players have made. Uh, there's some awesome OSR zines that Hobbs has donated to the uh, charity uh, raffle. Uh, there are a bunch of prizes like posters and t-shirts and uh, mugs from the uh, Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop. Uh, so there's a ton of great prizes. And the best thing is, is that all donations go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel. None of it goes to either of the channels uh, involved. Uh, it uh, None of it goes to any other middleman. It all just goes to help out those kids. So you get a chance to help some kids out who could really use help. And you get a chance to win some really awesome gaming stuff. Uh, I'm going to take my comfort break right now. Uh, so I will be back momentarily. Thanks, Kev. Awesome.
Yeah, so the raffle looks pretty exciting, and it's going to happen, did he say, on the first he's drawing? So the last day is August 31st. There's going to be another stream at um, the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel tomorrow. We're going to be playing Eberron 5th Edition. So I'll be playing Sounds in that game. Fun. I might stream it to uh, the Gamerhood as well. We'll see. Doesn't he let you buy raffle tickets almost to the, the point where he yes. starts choosing? Yeah, it doesn't shut off until, I don't know if it's midnight on the 31st or what. I don't know exactly. We'll ask Kevin when yeah. he gets back. So how's the game going so far, Brian? Oh, you know, it's great. I, I Midlands has some kind of it factor with me. I don't know what it is. Uh, but you can, it, since we're talking about it, you can kind of see why the Kalmata games take forever with uh, five or six of us, other than the just the four that we normally have in the Midlands kind of moves a little faster. Does it seem like that to you? With less people, it's definitely going to move faster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it is sweet having Steve and Sean and Arlen and you and me have all in one place uh we did this all the time i bet we could compete with the dungeon run i already do what are you talking about so does kevin doesn't he <laughs> i don't know i mean the dungeon run has like uh unemployed actors yeah it's kind of tough <laughs> to say that we're gonna compete with them but there's a t like you said this is like an all-star cast. It's beautiful. So, I always throw it to Steve. Like, Steve says we're going to do something. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, uh, it's a good group for sure. I mean, we're all employed, right? So that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, do you want to say anything to the to uh, the gaming and BS stream? Or are there anyone? Any BSers? Are you, are you that host? Are yeah, are you hosting? I am hosting. Um, I'm hoping they would be in the Hobbs channel, but nonetheless, if they're over on our channel watching the watching the show, um, you know, check out obviously the charity GoFundMe.com um, camp link to the campaign that Kevin's running. It's a good cause. Uh, thanks for joining everybody. Thanks for spreading the word. Thanks for giving. Uh, and thanks for the crew here for inviting me and, and giving me the opportunity to be a part of this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah, that's pretty you. exciting. I was very... Go ahead, Kevin. Oh, as you say, again, a big, big, big thank you to uh, Hobbs uh, for putting this uh, the game together as well. Uh, and for everyone who's, who's agreed to play too. So thank you so much for uh, for that. And for putting up with my old man voice. I should say that. <laughs> no, it's great. I should <laughs> say that uh, the Midlands is a book, also. It's so we're not just playing low fantasy gaming. We're also using, you know, Midlands, which is the actual book from uh, Pickpocket Press, also written by Steve. So all a lot of these factions and names and things that I'm bringing up are already known to Steve because he wrote them. He probably forgot them because. He's about to release a Kickstarter, which is a uh, a new game. So that's pretty exciting. Maybe no kidding. We'll get a minute to talk about that. Yeah, Steve, that's what's the new punk. game? Steve's not here, buddy. Oh, he's not here? I can't <laughs> he's see. He's not back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm dying to hear. Yeah, so his game is his game, It's called Low Life 2219. It's got a year afterwards, and it's a low fantasy gaming. People are some people are saying it's kind of a low fantasy gaming um, shadow run. Very cool. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah yeah. So I'm Steve, we're talking about your impending. Steve, we're talking about your impending Kickstarter. You want to say oh. a couple words about it? Uh yeah, it it is super impending. I don't know, before I said. Uh, it was um anyway it's super it's it's super super close and it's just a um it's a near future it's a shadow run style 
um, book, really. It's going to come with its own setting, uh, but it's, yeah, magic, cyberpunk, and sorcery sort of mixed together. Mm. Yeah, coming soon, coming soon. Nice. How many classes have you got in there, buddy? Uh, I've got... It's got nine classes at the moment. Uh, um, yeah, so it's very similar to uh, the Life Fantasy Gaming framework, but mm-hmm. but it's 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 heavily modified actually because it's just a lot more working parts, and because yeah, because I don't really expect there to be as many fights. Hit points are reduced a lot. There's just there are a lot of tweaks to it. Yeah. Cool. Steve, I got so a question. Maybe for we'll you. have you on Hobbs and Friends. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. No, it's, it's, it's something that's, uh, especially for um, uh, for the more independent creators too, what's the best way that people can support you by to by picking up the game? Like, what what is there a venue that it affords you more benefits, uh, like through drive through or through directly ordering or, or what? Yeah, uh, our stuff is only on drive through. The only other way, well, actually, the Midland stuff is on Lulu. Um, but the, the best way actually is through Kickstarter because the way that the fees work and all that, it just ends up better overall to, to do it through Kickstarter and then sort of later on, um, through drive through. But, um, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky question. We certainly don't, we don't produce anything ourselves. It's all done through the, um, yeah, online ordering through either Kickstarter or drive through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So uh, comparing us to the dungeon run. So we have two employed lawyers. So I think we already have a step up, right guys? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Wrong camera. Anyway, let's get this game back on <laughs> the rails. Cause this is a choo choo. All right. <laughs> So you guys are, uh, oh shit, that's the wrong button. Oh, oh no, God, we're dead. Oh no. F- <laughs> the button. Oh, oh, and calamity. <laughs> the wrong button. <laughs> so you guys flee into the woods, uh, and you do, you, the, that day passes, you know, you find some place to rest, and you keep on going, I'm assuming, hopefully reaching the Sky Road. Uh, maybe it's the only way that you'll be able to outrun principal morris and the anointed that are chasing you as uh another day passes in the woods you think you're on the right track looking for the sky road and that's when you kind of hear some sort of tumult on the path ahead it sounds like scroll the map oh sorry son of a biscuit Yes. <laughs> I can check my box. Oh. I got my son of a biscuit for the day. <laughs> hey, look at us. We've moved. Yeah. Never been this down here. So you're never been this far away from Vorngard. Nice. So it's about midday ish and you can hear some sort of fracas or tumult uh happening uh along the path in front of you. What are you going to do? Somebody want to scout ahead? Oh, I'm actually quite good at that, I think. Uh, I will. I can. A fracas. <laughs> exactly. As, as, as if Zedekar moves, I, I grab by the shoulder. Do go. Be careful. <laughs> I also may have forgotten that I traded that skill out. <laughs> When in my younger days, I was much stealthier. Now I'm better at talking. Sometimes. You may be, you may be, Except when you I'm may want to insulting community leaders. <laughs> Perhaps someone else is stealthy. I believe Nordak volunteered. Yeah, Zedekar says that. Borgard just looks down at his chainmail armor. Kind of jingles a little bit. Torsen, this all rests on all right, you so now. Like... Can... Can we try to get a luck point back by telling a little story? Maybe we, have we time can send for that? that dog ahead. <laughs> Not at this point. Maybe soon. Okay. Maybe, maybe send the hound. Actually, hold on. Can I ask you a mechanics question? The The way yes. that skills work is just to trigger rerolls, right? Like, otherwise, it's just a dex check? 
Yes, it would be a dex check if you have stealth. You get a plus one. I've on got that this, check. boys. Or, yeah, yeah. I do not have this, boys. <laughs> 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 and you don't. So you use your reroll pool. You don't I already have use my one, right? I only had one, don't I? Yes. Yeah. So one. it's already. <laughs> so I I turn and like hold on. I stumble twice, fall down, and then my gun goes off. <laughs> Boom! Voice take fires. All right. So oh. let's do this. Where did that root come from? I got this voice. Yeah. Boom! He the voice thinks he's twenty. <laughs> All right, and so here, let's just do it like this. Did someone else want to say something? No, no, I was uh, miming the dog licking my face. Oh. Noisily. Fenrir, wonder dog. All right. So Fenrir's rolling all over Zedeker. He's like, yeah, (laughs) playtime. One of them is dead already. Apparently I shot one. (laughs) I meant to do that. When you guys look up, it Take looks that. like they're fighting something up around. There's a bend in the and Zedekar falls forward, and you can just see uh, some large. They're about seven feet tall. They have just bits of rangy hair, heavily scarred, uh, and hunched over with a large nose and a heavy brow over deep set eyes and a kind of fanged mouth. These are all most definitely the scorn that you were warned about. So the tumult was up here on this hill on this escarpment. looks like they're fighting some kind of uh, chitinous scaled worm or snake, but um, another party seems to be approaching along around the bend here. Oh, I'm roll 20. All right. So what are you guys going to do? Is that a, Car has moved forward, stumbled away, and made a lot of noise. Borgar, what are you going to do? I am going to uh, step up next to Zedekar to form the shield wall and maybe offer a hand to help him up. We'll see about that. <laughs> I think I broke my gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about uh, Nordak? Uh, he'll move up to, yep, other side of... Uh, oop. Got the wrong selector. Here we go. Uh, who's next there, Thorson? Uh, sure. Thorson uh, looks around and he'll follow Borgar. <laughs> wick. Oh, wick. Minute. Proof. Bennett. Sean. Booker yeah. Bennett moves forward and hides behind a rock. Nice. <laughs> Do they want to trade? <laughs> as soon as Bennett starts to move past Fenrir, he's just growling at him. <laughs> so oh, happy wrong. to see you. I need control Licky, of Fenrir, Licky, the Wonder Zedekar Dog. Growling. You at least move oh, Fenrir behind Thorson in his usual spot, please. There we go. Okay. I grab a stick. I throw it the way we came. <laughs> Fetch, boy. <laughs> Fenrir don't buy that trick. Oh, God. He looks at you and he puts his head down on the ground and covers his eyes and then wakes up and shakes off like <laughs> that don't work on me dude <laughs> man dog's casting sass there <laughs> all right uh story do we need way. to initiate here or <laughs> uh sure let's do it nice oh i mean do you need initiative to not fight again. like just <laughs> Good wow, Lord. you're awesome, Kev. <laughs> I think I hurt my hip. Oh, God. <laughs> my, hip. my hip. Click. <laughs> Someone call <laughs> Medi help. Oh, God. Borgar, what are you going to do? 
I'm gonna pull out my axe and ready in action. So if any scorn come up next to me, I'm gonna smack them. All right, perfect, Thorson. <laughs> well, as soon as Thorson sees Borgar pull his axe, he does that thing he does where he pulls off his gloves, and you see him hit the ground. And I produce a longbow, Jim Hobbs. I will shoot. And shoot. First one that presents the biggest target. Go ahead and shoot. I am, I am. I'm getting there. Hold on. I'm old. No problem. <laughs> not not old like Kev old, but <laughs> let's go. And I'll oh, scream nice. for the Winari. For the Winari. Oh, that's probably a hit. I don't know yep. why it's doing ten, but there she blows. Because you rolled an eight. An eight. Where's the plus two coming from? Oh well, it's just a it dex. It's not like this is regular. It dex probably. All right. Tell, Tell him Steve. Steve says, yep, if yep, Steve yep, says yep. it's my dex. <laughs> so. Yep. There you go. Okay. Steve says so. That's what it is. <laughs> so. I'll look it up. Hang it on. is. I'll look it. <laughs> He slammed oh, no, by this arrow, but it doesn't kill him. It does turn him, and he kind of slows him down. Uh, he staggered. Yes. But the rest of them charge forward. So you can go ahead and attack that guy as he moves up there. Yeah, Hit him, Demarlin. All right. He's like, okay. Uh, smack. Oh, nice. Ooh. So what happens to this guy when he comes charging up to nail you, Borgar? So I just, you know, kind of, uh, he sort of is getting ready to swing, and I just take a step inside and smack right down, get him right in the skull and kind of, knock him off my axe. Yeah, so he falls dead at Borgar's feet. All right, who... Uh, did I, yeah, I didn't skip anybody, right? It's initiative again. Oh, wait, Zor Zedekar can do something. Uh, I, I'm, I got a critical failure on mine, so... Or terrible yeah, failure. You're just, yeah, you're after the other guys. Yeah, yeah, have they already gone? The yep. scorn? Yeah, they awesome. charge forward, but... Okay, yeah. So I'm going to kind of you know, move around a little more than I need to, get myself up and start reloading the voice. Okay. That's it. Initiative. So it sounds like these guys have successfully killed this creature above. Uh-oh. So it's possible that you could have more opponents soon. All right. Uh, great success from Nordak. Go ahead. Broker well, Bennett I hiding failed. <laughs> take a leaf from Thorson's book. He charges down here at this guy and yells out, For the Venori! And I'm going to try and do right. a major exploit to cut this guy's leg off if I hit. Ooh. He's got his two nice. sword. Okay, I want to stop for one second. Steve's For the Venari better than mine. Of course it is. It's <laughs> from Steve. <laughs> they were both equally fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So uh, right, what do we got to do here? You hit and you did damage, but now you have to make a luck. What? Strength check? Is that yeah, what it is? Or just a straight luck? Yeah. Uh, I think just straight luck. Or... Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Easily done. So this guy's I leg is leg completely, yeah, his leg is lopped flat out off. All right, and I kick him out the way. That looks like it hurt. <laughs> All right, so uh, Thorson. Yeah. <laughs> okay, GM Hobbs. So fever. Literally, I've been working this for a little while. Move over. I'm going to hold my longbow parallel to the ground or horizontal. I'm going to knock two arrows in it. I'm going to try to major martial exploit this one and this one. Mm. Okay. Okay. 
I hear go ahead or the thing or yeah. oh I'm thing, sorry. Man. Oh okay. Doing the thing, doing the thing. Major martial exploit. There we go. There she blows. All right. That's definitely a hit. Now straight luck check. I right, to mark off three arrows real quick. Straight luck. Boom. Come on, roll 20. Damn. Failed. All right, so yeah, those arrows, they seemed like they were headed there, but uh, at the last second, uh, this wounded one stumbled into the other one, and uh, the arrows went awry. Mm. Mm, indeed. All right, uh, who had some successes? Uh, Borgar, uh, Zedekar, Thanks, roll 20. and not, not Broker Bennett. <laughs> uh all right well the um I, it seems like the vonari have their own uh uh battle cry here zedekar has his own and as he brings up the voice and his eye narrows he very quietly says for profit <laughs> i love it yeah oh. it on <laughs> the tables have turned. Boom. Smoke billows out of the end of it. Nordak is enveloped in a cloud of black powder smoke. And the guy, and what happens to the guy in front of him, Kevin? Uh, it's not the one in front of him. I didn't want to risk the chance of hitting Nordak. Oh, the guy in the back? Yeah, it was the one in the back I was shooting at. All right. Um, I think that he's probably like running around the corner as he's trying to get into Nordak and his, like the side of his head just poof, explodes out and his momentum carries him down and poof, hits the ground like a sack of wet meat. <laughs> a meat sack. Meat sack. So to speak. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So we got one guy left up here attacking Bennett. Uh, let's see what these other I get to, do. I get to attack him first. Nope. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna step up, up over the one that's there um i guess i'll step up to here so that you can see me and i'm gonna try to smack the one next to nordak all right that is definitely a hit all right so what happens to this guy poor guy? <laughs> um well i you know nordak went for the leg i'm gonna go for an arm and just try to you know Chop it off at the elbow. All right, sure. He stumbles back, blood splurting out of what's left of his uh, forearm. You just missed the elbow, buddy. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Bloody elbow. Bennett, oh, you, Bennett, you don't get to go. All right, so these guys actually, after hearing the voice and seeing what happens, <laughs> they take off. <laughs> they seem like they're running away. <laughs> Love it. Uh Bennett, do you want to do anything? No. You, Not if they're running away. You, well, is any, you get, has anybody gotten hurt? Did anybody take no. any damage? No. Nope. No. Then I'm then I don't think there's My pride to do or need to do. You cried? My pride. <laughs> and I cried. My pride is irretrievably I injured. Think your battle cry actually scared him off. <laughs> I, uh, I I thank everybody for their their extreme heroism and bravery. Well done. Huzzah! <laughs> We've got profit. nothing to worry about now. For a profit. <laughs> yeah, it totally sounds like something, but I can't remember what. Let's see here if you guys want to see if they have something. I usually just don't give anybody anything. So... I'm sure their carcasses are filled with treasure and gold. Okay, question. I forget that you guys are still going to play these guys someday. What? Mm -hmm. I failed my martial exploit. Does that use a luck? No. Only when you succeed on the martial exploit does it use a luck. I at least got credit for trying. If you fail a martial exploit, uh, does that mean that you the underlying action failed as well, even? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. That's what I just ruled, but... Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it makes it because of the... So you guys find... Risk-reward thing, that's pretty cool. You also, after you make an exploit, if you 
if not if you make it if you fail an exploit against a target you're not allowed to make another one against that target until there's okay. something significant changing okay so that's 53 like you, jeeps you can't like uh, just work down a boss with exploits every time because as soon as you fail you can't do anymore mm. yeah the same method yeah it doesn't work yeah you guys jeeps. find uh some treasure yeah it's they have like uh you know like uh, very primitive jewelry when you think it's worth about 53 gold pieces. Can we look at this? Yeah, these thing? guys. Yeah, if you want to. Who is it? Is it L O H A L? Low Hail? Yeah, Scorn are usually terrifying, but not to this band of the Brian's Charity Session. They are ruthless and capable combatants. Well, you've got Steve and Fenrir the Wonder Dog and Borgar. You don't. Not really afraid of much. Not. I'd have stayed and fought it out with the, at that town. <laughs> and broke I'll kill every one of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's my horn when someone cusses on stream that I that I put out there. It's, like, it's supposed hey. to be an air horn sound. <laughs> you better get that thing hey, ready right then. <laughs> <laughs> not safe for work, DM cab. <laughs> All right, so the creature that late is up there, it looks like it's uh, it's like a slick, chitinous worm. And uh, it looks like it's been bludgeoned into death. Hmm. Okay. Does it look like anything could be worth any Jeeps in the town? Uh, hard to tell. You would be trying to carry a massive eight-foot-long worm. Oh, I don't. Pretty heavy. So maybe it's got some guts. Look into real quick. Uh, but you're then we try wanna, and chop it up. Oh, we just want to keep moving along. We only got an hour left, and it's a long, long way to Northgate. We don't even know where we are. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys continue to follow the path that was. Uh, given to you from Corona. And uh, it isn't long until another day or two, and you come upon a, a cave, but just past it on the other side, you can see uh, as the hill shifts around, you spot something that can only be the Sky Road. Nice. Whoa. Smooth sailing from here, boys. Is that like probably what four feet high? Mm, much higher than Looks that. Looks like about four <laughs> feet. Like the bottom part probably comes up to my kneecaps. <laughs> right? No. Possibly. It doesn't look like any easy way to aggress it, but you think it's coming from this other side of the hill, and you can see a cave that leads up into. Uh, up into it. Oh, did you guys want to? Oh, no one got hurt, right? Um, but you don't have any reroll pool points. Did you want to take a second to try and get those back or carry on? I should have asked you that before. Oddly enough, I was going to mention this when the stream started. It, I would be having so much fun. Somebody should remember to say uh, short rest after every fight. I'd like to try to get a luck point back, I guess. I don't think you can get a luck point back that way. Not from short rests. Okay. Sorry. Enough. So, <clears throat> forgive me. I, I think I knew this an hour ago, but I've forgotten it since then. To get my reroll back, I make a, just a raw luck check? No, you'd have to do... It's just like a, you get it during the short rest. So, you would have to decide how many checks you want to take, and then you have an opportunity to get that back. And what is like the check? You did. What, do I, what am I rolling? Will, oh, it's a will check. We'll check. Just oh. like uh, your short rest, if you're doing anything, it's one of the things you can choose to get a reroll pool point back. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Steve, or am I making that up? No, no, that's right. So basically, after a, a significant combat and the GM decides what counts as significant, um, then you can take a short rest. That takes five minutes or whatever. You know, you bandage your wounds. Then um, you can Final make your some voice. Moves, and it's either one, two, or three, generally. Uh, and... Yeah, for each successful will check, you can choose to get back either reroll pool, uh, expended ability, 
or half of the damage that you've suffered. Okay. Um, I think that's the three choices. Yeah. But okay. if you yeah. obviously fail all your will checks, you don't get anything back. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll roll. I'll take a rest from my reroll pool. <clears throat> so I've got. Oh. I'll use two. You have to choose two. Yeah, but I mean, I think you get some from a stat too. What stat gives you more? I think con. Your yeah, con, con modifier, gives you a bonus to the number. Yeah, add that. Of, yeah, across rest. The the years so didn't you use one of your didn't you use an ability too or no you can do the thunder thing whenever you want as well uh, no the i can use my gun whenever i want uh i didn't use my uh thunder gauntlet this time but Thankfully. you don't get them back the ability back unless you try to get it back right and that you was that last saying? one so i've got that back uh, now I've got oh you my did get it oh okay yeah now i got my reroll oh, nice. pullback so i'm good to go does anyone else want to take a short rest no nice cool this game is so easy you guys are killing it without any problems mm. don't have any time for that All shit right. <laughs> <laughs> carry on to the sky road if they yes. really are as tough as they say and as uh, they've proven they can go on forward <laughs> alright oh yeah so this is what I wanted to do uh, so you at wanted to tell a story you said so as you guys are there you, you make camp We'll say it's evening and you don't necessarily want to go in at night and yeah, you're making camp or maybe it's the night before. Uh, and it sounds like Thorson during the camp had something that he wanted to share with the others. Is that accurate? A story or something? Uh, sure. Thorson uh, will talk about the time that Orgar, Thorson, Ulf, and Holney Entered up to the lumber camp, and Holney was very sneaky and was able to go retrieve a box uh, from right from under the noses of these restless dead. Uh, the other, the rest of us just stood around and watched. It's a shame we don't have Holney here with us. That story doesn't reflect on you as well as you may think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't feel like you got a rousing success from that story. So no luck point. Good effort, though. I appreciate it. Do you have the All number right, for so... this other guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a hold in his cell number. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Well, how did get a hold of him? I guess you Somebody had to got be there. I think it was an awesome story, though, Hobbs. Even though it didn't highlight, uh, uh, what's his name, Thorson, and Zedekar's a smartass, I think it was pretty good. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, and Borgar was there, just... but he doesn't remember very well. He was he was very drunk at the time, <laughs> and therefore is, you know, mostly unaware of the events of that thing, so... He thinks it's really interesting to hear about all this stuff that he and, and Thorson and Holney did way back when. <laughs> so he votes votes that it was a successful storytelling. I guess that's true. Right. What do you think, Sean? I couldn't follow. I was <laughs> preoccupied with that dog growling at me all the time. <laughs> If that stupid dog would stop growling at me, I would have probably thought it was a great story. <laughs> it's not Steve, a what about you? you? You probably have some more comparisons. I'm going to leave it up to Lady Luck. If I roll it even, I'm supportive. No, denied. <laughs> <laughs> what if just looks around and says, what story? Hey, hey, I just wanted to go oh, on God. record. <laughs> There's no one in this game that's going to impress Steve with a story. Come on. <laughs> Not just me. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm impressing him all the time with my storytelling. <laughs> Reading it out of book. Reading it from his book. <laughs> the book he wrote. <laughs> All right, so you guys, uh, the next day, you find, like I say, you see the sky road and make your way up through these cavernous passages, and this is where we will take up the story of our people, or our people's, or the group story is what we're going to do. Oh, wrong button. Uh -oh. And they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> Rocks fall, everyone dies. <laughs> 
our fed shows up all right so you guys have found yourself in a series of caves and you're trying to find the path up and through to the other side where you might be able to get on the sky road here we are this is how i have you you guys might be different wick is carrying a lantern or a torch or something and this is where the party is in a small uh cave that's kind of winding around dark and dank uh, oppressive of the weight of the world and you know the herders and growers common on your shoulders okay what are you gonna do while we're still at the entrance to the cave um zedekar kind of okay shakes his head and says the easy way <laughs> <laughs> Uh yes. I'd like to ask Zedekar his safety is on this time in case he trips again. <laughs> person scoffs and says, You are ghosts and Yes. Your you've, feet hurt can you. mute the voice. You've made your feelings towards our people quite clear. I don't understand this hostility. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're all in this together. Um, we lean into Bennett. Perhaps he could take the lead. Mm. Thorson, you yeah. and your faithful hound seem best equipped to scout ahead. <laughs> so Thorson's just looking at this old guy like, sure. <laughs> Are you going to take the lead? Of course I am. Perhaps the, uh, the hound can can detect danger ahead and maybe move forward. <laughs> Certainly, he's more he's quieter than we are. Oh, oh, Ben will bark at Bennett and go roof roof. No oh, boy. Then starts to look at him and bears his fangs and his teeth. All right. So we're moving. This way or off the map? Yes. Which way are we going? No, yeah, you're moving farther onto the map. Okay. Okay. Well, there we go. Who's uh, carrying a torch or a lantern? I I thought I had one on me, but I had a little yellow dot on. First yeah, it was it. supposed to be on Wick, but I can't. Well, I, okay, it's too far on the side. So okay. I want to try to light one up for Thorson as well. He carries a torch. Oh, he does? Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. You know, a dog doesn't need a torch to move forward into the dark. <laughs> Toss a little ration down. Cool, boy. Sounds Get like, it. Uh, sounds like some some kind of crazy uh, <laughs> uh, Argosa tenets about dogs. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Person will say, uh, sounds like Argosans can't shut up. <laughs> it's way ahead of everyone else <laughs> talking to himself. <laughs> uh, Thorson's light isn't displaying for me. Yeah, I think neither. only he can see it right now. Uh, it's, that's bull. What kind of light is this? It's only a self displaying light. Uh, is that better? Could, there's a... That is better. Oh, great. Yeah. Need control of Fenrir the Wonder Dog again. Can you tell I preloaded the tokens? I was trying to save time. Unfortunately, I forgot to give control of Fenrir to anyone. Oh. All right, so as you guys are moving forward, you know, you've been moving through these caves. They were pretty straightforward. Uh, you didn't actually have to fight anything, but you can see the occasional. Uh, like ruins, like there might be some cobbles on the ground or like a stairway wasn't completely, um, wasn't necessarily naturally there. It looks like mm. it was built, it was man-made or human hands had crafted it. What uh, do we at know this about point, the, you can uh, hear something. Uh, Bob, so what do we know about the second age uh, civilization? You said there was, this is what the ruins date from? Like, is yes. this something we should be careful of or... Uh, you might be able to ask some of the other characters in the party. Uh, uh, you can make a general lore check as well if you'd like. That? Anyone who is not a, a first level character. Anyone who's not a first level character? Okay. 
I'll sit this those. one out. No, you can t- make it go ahead and make a general lore. I'm saying those guys, they don't necessarily need to because they already probably know something they could share with you if they wanted to. Great success. All right, Broker Bennett is aware. Yeah. So does any of, any of the players, characters want to share what they know about anything from the Second Age? I know far too much about the Second Age Ruin and the Crypt and uh, Kobe, uh, the great and the Crypt Keeper and all that other stuff. And I think Steve got up in there a little bit too. Are we going to try to role play this or are we just info dumping some stuff? I don't care. For it's your so, game, Brian. Yeah, for, for if, if you want to just point hit the highlights, what, what uh, Zedekar is particularly concerned with, just what we should be watching for. Like, Are we expecting oh, more uh, of those worms in here or are there like, uh, animated dead that we should be concerned about? Curses? Well, in, in the Second Age Ruin, there was a Crypt Keeper guy that called a Second Age Snake God that killed Thorson, and we ran into all kinds of snake statues and other uh, sort of dead creepies. Terrific. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> okay. Oh, Steve, you can go ahead and say what you're going to. You're a slow typer for a lawyer, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he dictates no, probably. Say what, uh, yeah. I'm sure he's got what? people for that, Dobbs. <laughs> Actually, no. But, uh, Actually, no. I was going to say what Brian said, but... Um, we had explored some serpent men, ancient serpent men ruins, um, which involved undead, as well as um, yeah. The, well, well, my guy wasn't involved, but he has heard of the the terrible tale of when uh, another party went into the ruins and one of their number went mad with a curse and ended up killing like two or three of the other VCs. Uh, before he ran off down into the darkness. Uh, I, I don't think he ever resurfaced. Um, yeah, so there has been some 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 dangerous encounters in, in these sorts of places before. Does Borgar want to add anything? Uh, once again, Borgar was too drunk to remember exactly <laughs> what happened. He about a monolith that one of the guys thought was important and... The, there's the entrance to, and then Borgar wasn't there for a section of it. He doesn't think, but maybe. So who knows exactly what goes on with the Second Age. I'm sure it's nasty, and we'll have to kill it with axes. Brian, do you have something to add? Uh, just nope. how many <laughs> uh, bodies that uh, has breathed their last breath on Thorson's face. So far in the Midlands. Okay, nice. <laughs> More like a hot take, Sean. <laughs> All right, you gonna move forward then? So, oh, that's what I was gonna say. As you guys were talking about this, as you were paused and Zedekar wondered, and that's when you hear uh, an echoing voice move up through the chambers below that you've already traversed, and it says, "We are coming for you, Broker Bennett." and you're certain it is Principal Morris, the anointed from Northgate. I recognize that voice. That is Fenrir Principal smiles, Morris. starts barking like, row, 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 come and get him. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. Row, 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 row. This dog Stop is not helping. I understand what you're doing people. I would just like to say say that I think that the role play award for this session should go to the dog. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's Brian always says that he plays Fenner and Thorson is his NPC. (laughs) 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 All right. What are you guys going to do? Throw Bennett from the train. Come on, man. We're, You've you been I, hired. We're going to get along if, if it kills us. So, <laughs> which way are they coming from, Jim Hobbs? Behind us or in front? Yeah, oh, they're chasing. But you're guessing it's, it kind of echoes along. They've been chasing you the whole session. For can a we week. collapse this t- tunnel behind us? Some oh, I got my fucking thunder gauntlet. Collapse the tunnel. I love the way you think, Jim. Yeah. 
These fuckers can't can't get after us. Hmm. Would it count as an exploit to modify my Thunder Gauntlet to go off like a bomb instead of being a like a range fist thing? Or a, a, a melee? Uh, so like an area of effect or something? Yeah, yeah. I like to it, set it up for something to like rumble make... and blow to leave it you behind. Should definitely be able to do something. Yeah, I have a, ha- I have a hammer. You could probably knock some rocks off the wall. Like I'll, I'm going to take instruction well, from Bennett. If Bennett doesn't want me to, you know, potentially collapse this on top of us, do we is it, do we know this possible. goes all the way through? Maybe you should see where it goes to first, <laughs> and then it may be foolish of us if we end up cutting off our only way in and out. Mm. Like we'll say a shovel uh, on but- it, solve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We haven't had Wick. We have enough players. I haven't had to add Wick at all. So what I was thinking is, if you did want to affect it, you could use uh, like your one of your skills. I don't like really want to do that. Uh, I've got a pop oh, carry. Is- <laughs> I have hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What? I mean, there's not really other. I mean, traps and locks. Maybe if I used intelligence instead of decks. Because I'm trained in that as well. Well, but you probably wouldn't have taken that skill. Uh, oh, Which, are you? Well, I, I have yeah, why don't you just make a... Uh... Well, hold on. I, yeah, I, let's just, this is a... I, what I'm foreseeing is that every time that uh, Bennett and uh, Zedekar have been anywhere underground, this is a, a plan he suggested to him. And to date... Sean, you can correct me if this is wrong, but to date, Bennett's been like, no, we're not fucking blowing up the tunnel. That's <laughs> right. I wish you would stop asking. Yes. How about this time? <laughs> you have to remember, we don't know what's at the other end. <laughs> ah, true. <laughs> Said a car. One of these days, we will go through a tunnel, and we will make sure that there is an ending, and then we will lure people in there so you could blow them up. Oh, such a day. Such a day. <laughs> All right. Um... Should we see what is further down the tunnel here? Borgar's getting forward there. Yeah, Fang Dragon. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'd set up a tripwire. Slow him down. By the Argos and stock. Do you have a... uh... Do you have some tripwire? You got to check. You got to check. You're going to make to see how successful it is. I have or to do that. Do you want to not use the time? Uh, All right, just to see how long it takes. Sure. Forget okay. it. Carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, all right. We're gonna fight these guys, and I want all the time we can to enjoy the. You know, like in, in the musters of the Midlands, we'll never get to see this group again. This is special. Uh, this is the cool one of the cool parts about um, S marches type games. Mm. Here we go. But you never get to see the group again. I th- uh, you get to see it once, though. I think he's planning All to right, kill so us. There's... <laughs> <laughs> Check your back. Make oh, sure don't get behind you. <laughs> Why did we ever agree to come here? <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> I asked myself that the whole time. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wait. I don't I have a choice. do something quick. Is there a way ball down? just kicks me out of the strumpet. Get out of here. <laughs> you got no place to live now. Let's see. Oh, God. There should be, there should be some light streaming in from, the, <laughs> from a cave opening. And you guys can see there's a stairway that leads up. And you believe it's the top of the sky road. But all of the talk... And the excitement you can see kind of uh, skittering up the sides a bit down from where you're at. Yep. Some kind of weird creatures. Mm-mm. So while you're getting that set up, what uh, Zedekar does, he looks outside to the, the exterior and he looks back at Bennett and there's a single tear running down his face because he's so happy. <laughs> Now, Zedekar, now's your time. <laughs> you just haven't seen this old guy little, like kind of hop and skip towards this tunnel. 
All right. Hobbs, you ready for us here? Yeah. Well, what are those things? You have to you have to look out there at them. They so, look. yeah, they're about to... Uh... Oh, yeah, I got it written out somewhere. I was ready, I guess. Not as ready as I could have been. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like these certainly uh, were once humans or humanoids of some type, but far into the ages past and their ancestors. But now they're hunched back they're about five or six feet tall and uh they're bloated with strange uh corpuscles and uh extensions that are just like flabbing out of almost like knobs of flesh and bone uh, all about them sharp teeth and angry eyes mm. surely abominations of dark sorcery and cursed bloodlines love it devilry ahead we could retreat, but I already got the go-ahead. <laughs> Let's see. Boom. <laughs> and then, come on. Don't let me down. Yeah! <laughs> Boom, baby. Another dog like that one. <laughs> All right, so you've set up uh, the bomb over there like was it going to go off when someone else hits it or what's the i think i just collapsed it's going to set off like a, a, a kind of a, a i'm picturing it being like a feedback reverb kind of thing and i toss the gauntlet down and then go running out carrying my little gun with all right. me Ooh, oh, oh, oh. all right yeah so you guys can hear a, a, something explode behind you and a big cough of dust shoots out of this cave opening along the road uh moving forward into the uh, unholy creatures before you. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You can kind of hear it as it's uh, rumblings in the hill. A fender definitely likes that. <laughs> okay. Sure. Oh, I have to reduce my uh, luck by one, right? success. Yes. Yep, okay, done. So you can see this thing, uh, this sky road leads out and past them, maybe about 200 yards. It looks like there's a, like a big uh, circular or cylindrical fortification or edifice of some sort that it leads into. And then another one bounces out of it. But inside the other one, you can actually see there's a trough down the center of it. And it looks like uh, it's like it almost like creates some kind of water slide that you could maybe float down very quickly, even faster than you could travel normally. Hmm. Okay. Did everyone make an initiative? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, sorry. I'm making it now. Do we need to click on our tokens for this or not? No. No, okay. No, I'm not putting it in an initiative tracker. Okay. I'm just looking at it. So it looks like uh, Broker Bennett has a great success. Nice. All right. Let's see if Broker Bennett's going to do something this game. Oh, there's some <laughs> ice. Oh. Somebody needs to make a save. Hey. My thing worked. Thing worked. <laughs> what thing worked? The Streamlabs thing went off. Oh, it did oh, it? Nice. Oh, finally. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why it just did. That's weird. How long did you? That was, how long did you? Well, you, did you set a limit? Yes, but yeah. there's a bunch of, oh, maybe that's why it's been so active. Mm. Mm. Well, it hasn't been, maybe. Like, you got to have so many folks on the limit. Um, oh, when land of the tall trees, welcome to the chat, buddy. Yeah. I know Brett's or Brett. <laughs> I know Sean isn't going to say anything important, so I'll just interrupt him. Well, I am trying to play the game. That's an <laughs> asset. I mean, I could be rude and talk over you, but I mean, that would be go ahead, buddy. I'm sorry. Booth. Um, well, my movement, I think, is what like six, right? 30 feet. Sure, I'm trying to think. Okay, I'm gonna move up. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move up, 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 up. So I'll move. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead. 
move there. That's it? You're just moving? I'm just moving because I'm going to wait to drop the hammer. All right, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about the hammer drop. Who's up? Rogar? Uh, yeah, saying? I can go next. I'm just going to move ahead. up. Hmm? Go ahead, sir. I'm just going to move up next to Bennett and ready my axe. All right, perfect. Who's up? Keep going. All right. Oh, Thorson will do that thing. Or he takes off his gloves and pulls his hair back, drops his gloves, and I produce a longbow. GM Hobbs, and I drop my torch. I will take a shot Fire. at the one that presents itself the best, which I guess I should move a little bit. I've got this crazy idea. But we're running out of time. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know, right? Shoot this one. I will scream for the Venari. Oh, you didn't get into it enough. You missed. All right. Damn. Who's up? Uh, I can go. Nor Nordak or Z Zedekar? Go ahead, Zedekar. Oh, if Nordak, go ahead. Uh, Nordak failed, so they're going before me, actually. Oh, oh okay. Yep, yep. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, Zedekar. Well, so, uh, what, is, what is my move again? I've got no armor on. Is I think it's 30 feet. 30, 30 feet? Okay. Yeah. Yep, so I'm gonna, uh, walking up towards Bennett, and Six as squares. I'm doing, yeah. I'm bringing the voice up and <laughs> going to fire at the first one. Let's see. Go here. ahead. Here we go. Boom. Oh, that's a miss. Yeah, so once again, smoke bellows out as the voice shouts across the open field below. Because, I mean, that's it's easily probably 30 or 40 feet below if you fell off this bridge. Ooh. Okay. So it's a long ways down. Okay. And, of course, there's no right. handrails or anything, right? Nope. That would be too sensible. <laughs> that's right. Nordak. All right, I'll move up next to Boga and have a shot with my heavy crossbow at uh, yes. this guy. Ah, lass. Misses. So as you... Oh, I guess they should have went before you, Steve. I forgot, but that's oh, fine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they should have. It doesn't matter. As you oh, move up there, <laughs> they all... They kind of let out this mutilating uh, whale. <laughs> Did they all do it at the same time? <laughs> Chef kid, it kind of wiggles into the back of your brain. So everyone make a saving throw, which would be a luck check versus. Um, I didn't copy this part over for some reason. I thought they could do this, but I forgot. Um, Hi, Will. Yes, it is Will. Oh no! Sorry, well, maybe they're supposed to be closer, but guess it doesn't matter this time. Boom. Oh no! I'm gonna fall over the edge. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, so, anyone who rules? makes it, you uh, you lose a point of luck. Okay. Can I spend a, a reroll to reroll that? that? Have... No, only on rest. Uh, luck roll. It oh, should yeah, say on yeah. It should yep. say on your character sheet. Okay. Yep. So it's wait. What, what's the consequence? Usually, yes, I think so. How bad is yeah, this going to screw me over? <laughs> Hobbs, what oh, happens if I fail? Uh. You may have a minor madness. Hmm. That doesn't sound optimal for tactics, but does sound like a lot of fun to role play. So, yeah, I think we're going to keep our reroll for now. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so this is what happens. Roll a d20. You got it. You try and stop me. I roll on a if you get just that a car, that's it. Nine. Oh, uh, Thorsten and Nordak also failed. Oh, damn. Kev rolled really well. Did I? All right. So, uh, for Zedekar, yep. you feel like um, the, the whisperings and the sounds in your head kind of 
burgeon into a feeling of dissatisfaction towards uh, Broker Bennett. And maybe that uh, Vornari Thorson isn't wrong because it's been enough time of him exploiting you and perhaps it's time for you to give the orders. But you can decide how strong that feeling is. Oh, Thorson, you had the same thing. No reason why this Broker Bennett should be controlling all of you. <laughs> You're a powerful Vornari, perhaps. Listen, you whippersnapper! Steve, you want to roll? I roll? should yeah, double uh, up. Yeah. I've already got a minor madness. <laughs> <laughs> Once per adventure, you have to use it. And so, almost out oh. right now. You already had the paranoia. So, now it has to happen every time. You already had paranoia before it's kind of what you just got again so it's turned into a moderate madness so it has to happen that. once per long rest or two nordak got a 13 <laughs> <Whew. laughs> nordak is quite certain that the the more you lie and exaggerate things the more others respect you <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect was that your favorite one <laughs> The only way to get ahead is lying. (laughs) It's lying and cheating. (laughs) You can go ahead and put that down on your character sheet. Because maybe you'll play Nordak again. We don't know. I'm sure I will if he leaves. All right. So, yeah, they set up that utilating, and they're kind of dancing and doing some weird stuff. You know, they're they're all doing the robot with each other as they shout out (laughs) this cry. And you guys are like, what is happening? One guy drops this one down. Oh, sorry, the wave or whatever. I don't even know what that would be. But anyway, uh, we can roll initiative again. They didn't even seem affected by uh, the uh, the voice, but perhaps that is what brought on their utilating cry. Mm. Oh, then it, then it. Yes. Amateur. Thanks, roll 20. Okay. All right, is that it? Cart, you want to go first? You got a great success. The first, so, oh, wait. I guess Nordak had one. Oh, geez. Everyone had one. Yours just the first one I saw. Mine's boring. I'm going to load the shit out of the voice. So, All right. Whispers continue. Hmm. Maybe I could make even more profit if Broker Bennett didn't return. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plotting on getting... <laughs> Sean's character killed yeah, by yeah. the rest of the party. <laughs> I'm going to laugh my ass off if I'm the only one that lives. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so, Sean, I think you rolled a great success as well. I forgot. What's Broker Bennett going to do? God. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm guessing I'm not aware of the psychosis that has set into my fellow party oh, no. members. They've always had those grins and those uh, slanting, uh, <laughs> awkward looks at you. I mean, you know, why, why wouldn't they? With this physique, I'm going to <laughs> tricky, tricky winds whipping across the sky road. I'll stop there. No, wait, and, wait. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to cast the spell. Do it. Cool. So I think I can only get one. Oh, it go 30 feet forward. It goes 30 feet forward. And then is it the radius? Okay. No, it's 30 feet from you, right? Oh, right. Okay, good. So I can get one, two, three, four. You have to roll four. a d4. Oh, shit. Oh, whoops. Not to interrupt, but think this is the first spell we've ever cast in the Midlands. <laughs> Imps of the true gods. Oh, shit. That sucks. So what's and, this look like? Uh, so I I walk up there super confident. Like, as I'm doing it, I'm taking my gloves off, sticking them in my belt, and then I stop and I go, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> 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 and I go, whoa. I go, I go like this. 
damn it. <laughs> Do they they fail or what? I'm rolling. No, they get the, they get a luck will save. Yeah, I'm rolling, I said. Oh, I, thought, I thought you said rolling. Okay. Hobbs, are you rolling? <laughs> oh my god, they both uh, for, Hobbs, you should oh, roll. Six. God. <laughs> and then I slump my shoulders and put out a big heavy sigh. <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> I needed a five oh, or less in Cecil. Thanks, Roll 20. It's <laughs> well, some kind of un. We fear no gods. Or Uas. <laughs> Who's up? Sean. There's always one guy in the game that seems like can't do anything, no matter how awesome they play or anything about him. Everything just fails. Shovel ought to do it. Back. I'm like, not, not a combat. Shovel ought to do it. Hobbs does All right, it who's better. Up? <laughs> a DDM check for casting the spell. Oh, I forgot DDM. Yeah, roll a D20, man. Yeah, I forgot. Let's do that. Uh oh, Steve says to members. do something. Stop the game. Just a reminder. Just a reminder. Yeah, DDM, man, I forgot. Let's go. You see, you have a DDM uh, toke, uh, button right next is it to the spell dark, dark and dangerous sheet? magic. Is that what that stands for? Just for those yes. we got folks in chat sure. who aren't uh, familiar with the game. Oh shit, that's for me. Oh yeah, for all the people I guess that are watching that have no idea what we're talking about. Anytime you cast a spell in, um, or use a magic item or anything, it could weaken the veil in the area that you are, and it's going to be a cumulative effect. So mm -hmm. until it happens. So right now it's a one in 20. So he needs to roll a D 20. And if he gets a one or a one or less, <laughs> then okay. something is ooh, a good thing. Ooh, Otherwise sure. that would have been the other side. So nothing occurs, but, uh, and the spell still goes off, mm -hmm. but these creatures do not fear in some ways it's possible that maybe they're familiar with magics and the blessings, but they do not fear any gods. Mm. Okay. Then they all do the Batuzzi at you. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Now, is anyone else up? I think it's Nordak and then me, because I only got a regular success. Nordak! Right. Drops his <laughs> uh, heavy crossbow. He's not going to reload. He just charges this guy. Nice. <laughs> Go ahead. I faced a hundred of these before. We're getting that two-handed sword. Ooh, nice. Uh, what do we do? 13. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, my guy's using the... His default stance is two-hander, which is why that damage is rolling with advantage, in case anyone's... So what happens to this dude? Does, he, off the side. does he finish him? Yeah. Oh, awesome. He comes charging in and just one massive swipe and sends him flying off the, um, off the edge of the... No, uh, have his head fly off the edge and his body slump in front of you. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang, I was going to as the head flies off, what sound does it make, Kevin? <laughs> no, I thought it was... Oh, you want the... Wahoo! Yeah, <laughs> wahoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a bingo <laughs> card for uh, Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. <laughs> wahoo! -hoo. All right. The Wilhelm scream for going off. <laughs> is that ever oh now Borgar it's me now so I'm going to you see Borgar's stance change ever so slightly the shield's held a little lower the axe held a little higher because I'm using adaptable to switch into charger stance to charge up here and try to smack this one alright so mm. that's 12 oh. points of damage bravo oh. All right. So what happens to this guy? Uh, this one, I think I, I kind of rush him and kind of body check him with the shield so he knocks over and then just finish him on the ground with the axe. Okay, perfect. So that's what happens. Who's up? Is it their turn now? Thorson. It is their turn now. Or did Thorson fail? Ooh. Yeah, Thorson gets to go at the end. Lucky. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Roll20. <laughs> uh, uh, he always says that that's why I said it 
All right, so these guys mob forward. <laughs> Someone chat says apparently beheading people sounds like Mario. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so we got two possible guys on Nordak. They both attack Nordak. All right. And then the rest are going to, the other two are going to attack uh, Borgar. They get advantage Borgar. against me, too. Um, Hobbs. Oh, yeah, they all have advantage, yep. don't they? Yep, yep. Cause I the ones attack. attacking me do not have advantage because I'm in charger stance. Oh, nice. So it would have been the three. It misses. And a 12 still not going to, or that would be the nine. So 14 going to hit Nordak. Ooh. Actually, I think that's a miss. He's got pretty good AC. He's got 17. All right. All right. Yeah. So you guys slam into their mitts and they swarm around you. And uh, nothing happens. Good work, boys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Thorson, I guess. Yeah, Thorson, sorry. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to roll against my will like Jason did in the nice. crypt because I'm mad at the Argosans. <laughs> and I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. no. Oh. You know, oh, he's upset that it happened. Is, is that a good thing or a bad thing? He wanted to kill I, Zedekar. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't even think you're an Argosan. Yeah, Want to move up? He is. Whistle uh, for Fenrir the Wonder Dog. Wick to move up. I'm going to try once again at Major Marshall exploit. All right. Level my bow uh, horizontal. Target these two with two more arrows, GM Hobbs. Okay, one of shame them is it, in melee there. Shame if it hit Bennett. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit more careful aim. Buddy da There we go. Oh, it's a shame. This is... It wouldn't a... hit uh, Bennett, but it could hit uh, uh, Borgar. It can't hit Borgar. I'm a second level ranger. Oh, so does that mean you choose or something? It can't happen? Okay. Sharpshooter. If if not second level ranger, it's sharpshooter. Okay. There we go. Bang. Anyway, yeah, another epic fail. Uh, Thorson. Okay. I'm not sure what, how sharpshooter stops it from hitting someone else in melee combat. Or is there a different skill or something? Yeah, there is Ugh. for the ranger, yeah. Let okay, me look shot. it up. Steady shot, yeah. perfect. At second level, right. they can't accidentally hit their friends. Yeah, it's one of them. All right, well, that's ranger. awesome. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good to see a second level ranger going on in here then. All right, so now it's time for initiative, guys. Okay. Hey, come on, you guys. Finish them off. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a little while to load that gun. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> oh, that's she, oh, right. oh, Whoa. Uh, Thorson. All right. It's like reverse, I think. Reverse yeah. order, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to just shoot these two. I'm going to try to hit the first one with the arrow. Can't do a major. You can't do a major exploit against them again. Oh yeah, because I shot at that one already. I'll just shoot the one that's flanking on Borgar that I'm pinging. Good. And this time I'll get one more mighty battle cry. Or the Venari. All righty. It's a hit. Do you want to? You do you have? You don't have any sharpshooter uses left, do you? Um. Haven't used any, so if I could, I will try to use my perk and double that damage. You haven't you used it like two or three times already? Yeah, but it's been different days. 
Yeah, but that doesn't matter. You have to still take the short rest to get your abilities back. You don't just automatically get them. Enough. I points of damage, GM Hobbs, to the one I'm pinging. All right. Thank you. That's enough to kill this guy anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Arrow thunks into his side as he's attacking Borgar. All right. Uh, now it's time for... Oh, that was for a great success. Nordak. All right. He's swinging that two-handed sword around again. He'll try and hit this guy. Far. Here we go. Oh, no. This no, is. No. Ducks out the way. That's right. A little uh, slip and slide. All right. Now it's their turn. Um, uh oh. Moves in here. Let's get rid of this guy. All right. So no one is at a disadvantage or anything now. Uh oh. So oh. that is Borgar got hit twice. Oof. And a 19. Oh, yeah. 19. What the hell does this guy do on a 19? With whatever weapon they're using. Well, they might have something special. I don't know. I better look it up quick. Sorry. All right. Oh, shit. All right, so basically it whacks you, and uh, you can feel the vileness of their uh, infernal packs, and uh, you lose, you're cursed and lose a point of luck. Not so good, but not so bad. Mm. I'm going to try to permanently. rescue X point. Uh, also, oh, you're permanently. Sterile. That's worse. Wait, permanently? Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Because you don't Who get wrote this game? unless yeah, certain things happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're cursed, dude. You got cursed by this creature. I try to rest your damage action take. <laughs> uh what do you what's the what are you doing? I'm gonna just run up and jump in the way. Whichever one of the, I'm assuming that was this one that hit him that's flanking him? Both of them hit him. Well, that's even better. I'm going to just boom, bull rush this guy, and Fenner will move in, and so will Wick, and we'll just push them right out of the way so they don't hit Borgar. All right. All right, so you're trying to push Borgar out of the way. So if there's any sort of failure here, we could have some people tumbling off the bridge, it sounds like. Which, I don't you know, want to push what, Borgar that's... out of the way. I wanted to push these things out of the way. That's kind of an attack. That's not necessarily really a... Uh, uh, making them miss so you can just try to knock it so it doesn't happen or something okay go ahead and make a dex check let me which, yeah, which attack are you stopping which attack are you stopping uh, the one that the first one or the second damaged one damaged just borgar that would be the second one all right you made a dex check uh now just make a straight luck check okay Come on, roll 20. Let me save R them just once. Come on, roll 20. Hey! Man, you still have 10 luck? You still have 10 luck left? I feel like you've been using a ton of luck. Whatever. Well, you started right, at 12. So, yeah, 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 good. Good job. All right, so, yeah, you muster yourself in there and stretch it in, and the second one doesn't hit you, so you don't take the four points of damage, but the first one was a natural 20, so you take seven points from that first attack. All right. Dice. All yeah. right. Now who's up? I think we got some people who had failed. Looks like uh, Arlen. Orgar, right? And then... Yeah. Zedekar. Oh, Barlin. Ben Bennett, you can go as well. And uh, well, Zedekar will bring up the rear. So I'm going to I'm gonna switch back. You see Borgar switch back into his normal stance. Shield held high. He's back in protector mode. And um, he's going to try to <laughs> whack... Uh, this one in front of him, he's just trying to clear the way so that Nordak can get some flanking going. Nice. Oh, nice. Smoked him a good one. Yeah, so definitely whatever you're trying to clear gets cleared. The flank guy, right? Or no, you said this guy or which one? I don't remember. Uh, I think the, this one in front of Nordak that's kind of off to my right. All right, yeah, so he gets chopped down. Nice. Uh, Bennett? Looks like you moved up. I'm going to try that. Can I try the same spell on these guys? 
Yeah. Again? All right. That's what I'm going to do. Boogie woogie. Boo. All right. I see you have a slightly different uh, spell sounding magical word verbiage happening see, there. Yeah, I had tweaked the words wrong the last <laughs> time and just got Roll it. it wrong by that. That must wrong. be it. For, forgot that to conjugate be. the magical vowel or verb. Yeah. <laughs> Roll get, a d4. Uh, <laughs> conjugate a vowel. <laughs> It's God magic, damn, Kev. <laughs> Two. Magical grammar. Two of them. Ghosts. All right, so one of them saves still. Oh, God. Uh, but one of these guys is going to go rushing away. Should probably Fleeing. rush right off the side of the bridge. Safer that way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 30 feet on the... There's a tree there you could jump into. <laughs> go towards that F&A, tree. cotton. A tree. Don't break it home. <laughs> all right, so uh <laughs> all right, uh Zedekar. Yes, sir. All right. Uh so one of them is panicking and running. I'm not gonna shoot that one. Uh let's 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 uh shoot the one in front of uh Borgar. All right. Yeah, let's do that. So once again, I yes. finished loading it up. Oh, it took a long time this time. Take aim. And. Boom. Oh. Hey. That was a 19. What happens on a 19? Anything? A uh, 19. Oh, yeah. Natural. At 19, a random body part is injured. Uh, oh, my God. Can you yeah. look this up? Roll D6 and Roll consult D6. the injuries and setbacks table. <laughs> All right. DM Kev. Three. What does that do? Fucking, is the injury and setback table on the screen? I got it here. No. Oh, here it is. No, oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's it do? Leg or foot injury. <laughs> I shot him in the foot. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Blasted his foot off. <laughs> yeah, you did thirteen points of damage. So. You, the lower portion of one of his legs just gets blasted off and just sh- in gore and nastiness uh, as just a bit of his leg is sh- yeah. leg bone is showing and the rest of the foot is gone. Nice. So I would have All had right. to carefully shoot that under oh, Borgar's so not- shield too, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, you basically, that was all you could see of him <laughs> through past everyone. So if Borgar looks back, all Zedekar right, so just gives him a little... Uh, I have a lot to do it. All right, let's roll initiative. Okay. All right, everyone with a great success can uh, go for it. <laughs> I'm reloading. I move up, and I'm going to just rapier him. Do it. It hits. <clears throat> nice. Sean, what happens to this guy? I I take my rip ear and go right through uh right to the side of Nordak and who's right next to me? Thorson. Oh Thorson. Oh Bargor Bergor in that next to you. Just kind of right through Bear gore. Boink. <laughs> right through its eye. Oh. Whoops. Thorson. Hey. I am going to just say Fenrir. Down low. Fenrir will just boop, boop, boop. And himself an advantage. Borgar a plus one. Thorson will go ahead and move up. We'll both do our attacks. This guy seems like he's cowered from uh, the fear. It doesn't look like Fenrir is going to hit. All right. Person is going to go ahead and pull out his light hammer. Doing business as Mini Molnir. This is. That's a shame. Get him, DMR, then. Wait. Yeah, Nordak okay. and Bergor. Or Borgar. <laughs> Once we started, it's not going to stop. <laughs> it's not going to stop. Yes. Seals off. Yep. 
<laughs> All right, battle axe. Remember what, oh no! <gasps> Emperor would have attacked oh. with advantage, just for not. That oh, attack far with behind. advantage. And Bor and you would get plus one. So All right. Emperor would have had another hey. d twenty on that. Oh. <laughs> I don't think Jeez. you get advantage, Borgar. Borgar, you just get a plus one. Just a plus one? Okay. I well, then I so. still fumble because it's in that one. Yep, yep. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, just a the plus one with yeah. flanking. Yeah, yeah, you don't get advantage. Oh. All right, nice. So why do you play but this the thing field is feared on, uh, your roles, and running though? away. Yeah, no kidding. This <laughs> thing is running away anyway, so it's not going to attack back at you. Uh, Fenra uh, would have gotten like... an 18. Sorry, I yeah, screwed up the advantage. So sorry, the person. Sean. All right. It's not dead. Is that everybody? I think so. So yep. this thing is fleeing away right off of the bridge. It's go scaling down like an orangutan in the jungle. But you guys can make some attacks on it, whoever's there, like uh, Bergor, uh, Fenner, and Thorson. Sure. Finra already had a hold of it. So All right. Finra yeah. definitely hit. <laughs> For six. All right. So as you guys are finishing it off, you do that. And it looks like the path is clear. Go. Go. You hear a strange rumbling. Rumbling from the cave uh -oh. behind. Oh. All right. So you guys uh, get down. And when you get down there, it looks like someone has crafted some reed. Uh, they look almost like shields. Or luge. <laughs> luge things. So you figure out that you can ride down the sky road on the water and take a, a extremely quick trip down. It's only stopping that would be the problem. All right, so it is pretty much eight o'clock. And so you guys make it back, but there, I thought we would go around and everyone could see if they had any highs or lows for the game. And then, uh, you know, you guys could slowly get off your streams and Kevin could talk about the raffle briefly or whatever. So uh, Steve, you want you got anything you want to say? Any highs or lows or anything you want to mention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highs definitely getting to play with all you fine people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much so much, Kev and Hobbs for organizing this charity match. It was really good fun. Uh Lows, I'm disappointed we didn't get to face off with um what was the name? Principal Principal Morris. Yeah. But uh at least um on the other hand, at least got to blow something up, so you know, that's yeah. Right. It yeah. opens out. Shauner. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say, uh, finally killing somebody would have been, which I wouldn't expect Bennett to come off and do, and uh, playing with all these fine players. Um, yeah, I would say that's the that's the high. Yeah, for sure. What about lows? Lows. Uh, my spell fizzling. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought I thought you were gonna say I prefer Menards. All right. Anyway, <laughs> bom, bom, bom. Wow. Arlen. <laughs> um, yeah, highs. It's always it's always great fun to play in the Midlands. Um, and generally, I I enjoy you know getting to smack some bad guys as Borgar with my axe. Um, lows. I I couldn't hit any of the like militia mob guys. That you know. <laughs> Really took mm -hmm. took the wind out of my sails to be swinging against some farmers and not be able to kill some of them. So sometimes you know, next time, next time, we'll go yeah, back just... and we'll raid their asses and <laughs> take all their their gold and you know treat them like real Vornari would. Arlen, I don't know if I'm comfortable with raiding their asses. That's I, I, <laughs> I don't know about somewhere. that turn of phrase, buddy. <laughs> Brian, you got any last words before your charity session ends, sir? Yeah, the low point obviously was I had a chance to buy two of these things and I didn't do it. I'm kicking myself in the nuts for that after being here. <laughs> obviously, I want to thanks. Uh, big thanks to the podcast. I, I think we're gonna need a dex check for that because <laughs> that sounds pretty tough to pull off. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a willpower check. I mean, who kicks themselves in their own nuts? Jesus. <laughs> it's like you never heard that before. Uh, I don't think I have. You don't get out enough. Awesome. Did you have anything else? Sorry. That's oh, true. Just uh, thanks to the podcasters uh, for getting the, the word out. Um, thanks for Steve for showing up and sponsoring the Midlands. Really big thanks for GM Hobbs for running and and really he did all the work on this. I, I basically said yes to a couple questions on the Discord and big thanks for DM Kev uh, for having us on the, on the YouTube channel and for setting up the charity and basically everything you just do for us. I really appreciate it and it was awesome to be back the mighty dungeon musings youtube channel i'm not a regular so i don't know when i'm going to be back so farewell everybody bye (laughs) thank you all right kevin right so uh first off uh to follow that up uh an enormous uh thank you to to brian uh for making this session possible uh the uh uh, we only offer a a few of these uh every year just for the sake of my sanity uh and a huge thank you to to Hobbs as well too for agreeing to take this uh this one and run this one it's always I I very rarely get a chance to play um and I had so much fun so Brian thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to play with all these fine folks as well too um a a big thank you to to Sean to Steve uh it was great playing with you guys uh, today as well too nice to finally see you in person uh Steve and nice to meet you uh Sean and Arlen always awesome to play with you so (laughs) thank you so much for playing um, the, uh, sessions that, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the reason that we had this session in the first place was because of, uh, as I said, Brian's generous donation to the Heroes Save Villages campaign. January, we, uh, will be opening up the, uh, uh, the, the charity sessions available again too. We, that's when we make them open and we, you're able to make donations to Heroes Save Villages to benefit SOS Children's Villages International, and you can get a charity session of your own, um, in addition, from now, as we said uh, a couple times, uh, from now until September 1st, we still have the charity raffle. Uh, you For every $25 donated uh, Canadian, and I mean, we all know Canadian dollars are mostly made out of maple leaves and uh, and uh, sticks. So it's worked so to about $18 American. Uh, every donation of that amount uh, may, gives you one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other awesome prizes that we mentioned Uh so, um, yeah, there's no limit to how many you can get. And then we will be doing the li- the draw for that live on the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel on uh, the night um, Mountain Standard time uh, in on September 1st. So same day it ends, same day we'll be doing the draw. And we're doing it old school style. We make random encounter tables and we roll. And <laughs> we go from that and as people win... You get your name scratched off, so tons of great prizes. Thank you again to Steve for donating a copy of the uh, Low Fantasy Gaming uh, hardbacks uh, to this as well, too. Or hardback, that I really, really appreciate that. That's very generous of you, and uh, more than you needed to do, especially if you're showing up to play with us today. Um, and Hobbs as well, too. A big, big thank you, not only for him running the session today, too, for his generous donation of some of the OSR zines, uh, the Hobbs and Friends zines for, uh, for prizes, too. Those are super cool, and I really appreciate that, too, Hobbs. Um, and I'll end this by saying that, uh, again, a, bi- a big, big thank you, not only to, uh, to Hobbs, to Brian, to all the players, uh, to everyone who uh, joined us today as well. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us for another one of our, uh, charity one shots. Uh, if this does find you in the, uh, middle of the, uh, uh current ongoing, uh, crisis that, uh, we find ourselves in, in the pandemic, uh, we do hope that this finds you healthy, uh, safe and weathering the current crisis as well as can be expected, um, we hope they'll be giving you a couple hours of, uh, time to turn your mind off of problems of our world and think about the problems that we can try and get ourselves into. And, uh, until we see you again, happy.